believe it is all discover. Tools? I think you guys can see us now. Welcome to this week's Beyond Nemesis podcast, which is a super exciting. I mean, not that they're not all exciting, but this week's super exciting because we're basically done with E3 right now, kind of in the middle. Capcom just just went like literally had their conference like literally an hour ago. Conference. Um, Capcom had one. Yeah. When? Presentation. What? And actually they, they had one, actually. They had a presentation. OK, <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally, literally just happened. Uh, but more breaking news. This is very, very important. A Halo Fall Guys crossover just leaked. Master Chief and Arbiter are going to be in Fall Guys. So. There you it's go. It's been so many years. It's been more than 10 years since we lost. We last got to play as Arbiter. And uh, here we are 10 years <laughs> later. He's in Fall Guys. Poor Keith David lost all of his work. Were it so easy? I saw uh, my my wife was watching some random movie, like some random, like not even like B movie on like Netflix or Hulu a few weeks ago. But this was months ago now. And I saw it. And I like walked through the room and I was like, hold up. Is that Keith David? She like has no idea who he is. Um, I was like, so I sat down to watch the movie with her. And like he, he literally lasted maybe five minutes in the movie before dying. I was like, yep, definitely Keith David. Because that's basically what all his roles have been his entire career. But he's still going. Wasn't Keith David uh, Mufasa from Lion King? What is wrong with you, dude? That's James Earl Jones. <laughs> Keith, Keith, Keith David was, he was in, uh, Keith David was like the token. I, I don't want to say it really. Ooh. <laughs> it, it's just the truth. That was, he was cast in all those roles. Like, like the cool, going to be in the movie for five minutes. And then die. Like that was his role. Like he was like the token cool guy for five minutes and then die. I would try clue. Except uh he's in the thing. He's a prom pretty prominent character in the thing. You know, I never even watched the thing either, to be you honest. Should. But it's I know really he good. was in the thing. Yeah. He, yeah, he was it's really good. Um, um But oh my god, we got so much to talk about. Yeah. I can't <clears throat> wait to hear the amount of hopium you have inhaled <laughs> and the amount of copium that you're using to... <laughs> the amount of covid that i've inhaled because i did a lot of that too oh, unfortunately okay. um <clears throat> all right so uh we're starting with xbox like it or not we have so much to cover tonight it's going to be unreal and i want you guys to put your reactions and thoughts in chat too we might not be able to respond verbally to them all but we'll definitely be reading them so uh I don't think it's a stretch to say that Xbox had the biggest event, uh, uh, I mean, up there, individual company, because we had Summer Game Fest. Yeah. Um, so they, had, they were like the most expected to be as big, and they they generally were as big, because like, yeah. of not just expectations, but because of the amount of stuff. That it was a 90-minute showcase, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they, they have another one tomorrow. It's like an extended version or something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm um so they went yesterday so let's start with with xbox and should we just start with starfield it, it, it's it's probably it, do you think starfield is the most anticipated video game like right now in general and any on any platform oh no what do you think it is i think it was elden ring no that's not out most anticipated like upcoming like right now there's like quite literally nothing i think at the moment so you think Starfield is the most anticipated game? No, no, no. I don't think it is the most anticipated no? game. I, I think no, no, not at all. What do you think is? I, I think it is. Everybody I know I is like Starfield, 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 Starfield. I guess we hang out with different people, man. Because I'm just so more. I'm more in the conversations with most of my circle and my outer circle, mainly about like multiplayer games. It's only with you I really get to talk about this kind of stuff. But whenever it comes to social media. I mean, like, I'd say it's all over the place right now. I mean, even God of War Ragnarok doesn't even seem to be, like, that hyped up, to be honest. And well, that's, that's Sony's probably fault, the, I think. That's Sony's fault, yeah. yeah. Like, there's there's no hype around it. But, like, <laughs> I don't think there's, like, any game. I think Elden Ring was, like, the last game that I could come to mind that was the most hyped game from everybody. Yeah. I think I think it's Starfield. I think it's taken that that crown. But, Did you like anyway. it? I saw some tweet. No, no I did no. not. Um... In, in in fairness, I, I'm not a huge RPG guy. Like that's not like my like 
have I played plenty of RPGs? Yeah. Like, are Bethesda RPGs my, my jam? No. Like, yeah, I, pl I played, I finished Fallout 3, um, played, you know, I've tinkered in virtually all of them, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I did not like Starfield personally. I think it looked boring, drab, slow, clunky, every bad adjective in the book. I mean, I get this scale is the big thing. And and it has, I think it's got it's gonna have that I've got no doubt. Yeah. It's been in development for or planning at least for what they say like twenty years, 20 I years. think. Yeah. yeah, twenty years. Well, I would like to take up the responsibility of the conversation as the mantle of responsibility. Games, mantle of responsibility, <laughs> as you must look at look at my hands, by the way. Like look at the 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 contrasted difference when I wear my gloves on my bike. <laughs> um. But uh, no, I think Starfield looks great. It's not promising me. Pretty good for honestly, a 64 game, I'd say. 64 game? Nintendo 64. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I mean, like, I think it looked good. I mean, like, I actually, before we jumped on, I was like, let me rewatch the trailer because the stream was awful. I don't think it did a good job presenting itself. I think the Xbox production team literally output a 720p <clears throat> stream. Uh, and that also like impacted my visual representation, like my visual yeah. uh, view on the on the stream also. So uh, I rewatched it just now, and like they released the 4K was, version. Yeah, I watched it in 1440p, and I thought it looked great. I thought like <laughs> texture wise, I think detail wise, it's definitely the most like detailed game Bethesda has ever made in a, in their open world RPG experiences and settings. I mean, I've played every bethesda fallout and skyrim that there is i haven't played e no, skyrim elder scrolls sorry holy shit um i played all those games and i've grown with them over the years and fallout 4 was a great example of like what i don't want them to keep doing mm -hmm. uh, i did not like fallout 4's art style I, and they're very uh capitalistic actual capitalistic monetization upon the game uh, and the franchise itself but i mean it looked good still despite the art style uh, and I think this looks great. It definitely needs a lot of work, though. The I game thought, literally was hitting like 20 frames per second. There was like JPEG AI images of like smoke. AI was like doing some wonky stuff. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, you know, whenever you see where obviously more time and effort was put into the game, it shines the most. Uh, and I liked what I saw, to be honest. And I can see what they're trying to do. They're not really doing a lot to talk about the game, maybe because it's just not ready, obviously. Well, like, um, it was the final game in their show. I mean, it got a big slot. And they, they, I thought they showed quite a bit. Uh, well, I think they, I think they had to. I mean, to your yeah. point, I mean, it's just my opinion. I don't think Starfield is the biggest game. But if I had to be the only Xbox fan in the world right now, and the only thing you have on the horizon is vampire game or this really big open world experience from the same people who made elder scrolls and fallout i would choose mm -hmm. the latter um the game looked good it i think the delay was obviously needed like from what we saw yeah we, for sure we saw what was pretty much bethesda leaving the quality setting on on the xbox series x so that way they could show off how pretty it can be um and obviously even in that state it's just not pretty. so now we have answers to a I lot mean, of things i thought let, let's Let's shift gears a little bit. We can still talk about Starfield if you want to, but what did you think of the overall like conference and presentation? So Starfield was the final, you know, yeah. gem of the but but tell me, because I have my thoughts, but it was a seven out of ten for me. I think that they missed a large opportunity, and I only give it a seven out of ten because a lot of the other two points comes from the riot announcement. I think yeah. the riot announcement was absolutely insane that was the bigger mic drop compared to star starfield to be honest the blizzard I stuff i liked personally having that in there helped too it bad overwatch yeah. 2 being free was really good too so now like i don't have answers for that diablo 4 um, uh, but the yeah diablo 4 looks really good yeah it does. Diablo 4 looks really really good um <clears throat> but the the riot thing like blew my mind like i was yeah. watching it with like with my, with my the value of like, that is literally like thousands of dollars thousands of dollars dude like my girlfriend lo is a riot gamer she plays mm. league she plays valorant um and she'll play more valorant games as they come out i know that for sure but like whenever <clears throat> she sees that she doesn't care about console stuff she, yeah she just plays games that she likes and that's all she knows yeah she, like whenever i hear my girlfriend say holy shit you know that's a big deal to a lot of those players that are like her and I feel so bad for everybody who's actually sunk money into like games like League of Legends. Valorant is a pass. 
you don't pay to like complete those characters, yeah. but getting those agents is still he really really still a big, big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever they talked about their investment into PC gaming, I was like, yeah, but I mean, like, fix your app. That's all anybody cares about. Yeah, and I then know. they drop this riot <laughs> thing, and I'm like, holy shit! Actually, <clears throat> they've went above and beyond. They literally hit the almost near entire like gaming PC user base yeah. <laughs> with those. With that That's true. So. Uh, five out of ten, though, if we're, if we're ex- like we're removing everything else from that, I don't think I, that Xbox showed everything that they knew were capable of doing. No, and, and I I just made like a quick list of everything. This is just stuff that we basically know about, like not even like surprises, oh. but like stuff we basically know about that they held back. As soon as they said only the next twelve months, I was like, that's a big mistake, and, and that's not like a slant to the games that they showed because there's a lot there was a lot of games in there that I'm gonna play personally and like still like it goes back to the game pass thing like in that conference like there's more games that i'm gonna play like for there's probably like seven or eight games that i'm gonna play that they showed during that conference that would pretty cool that would cost me the same amount as two games on a switch or a playstation like the value is still insane and they demonstrated that but like Avowed from Obsidian, no show. Perfect Dark, no show. Fable, no show. Halo Battle Royale, no show. Uh, Coalition, no show. Id Software, no show. Machine Games, no show. Everwild from Rare, no show. And some of those we expected. Like Everwild, we knew we probably weren't going to see. Yeah. I mean, everything yeah. else at least deserved some sort of update. Rather, besides what we already know is. I felt like I felt like they had the chance to really, especially because like. You know, Sony only did a small conference and like, you know, all these other companies aren't doing like big conferences, really, or or showing all their cards. I really felt like Microsoft had a chance to just like whip it out in front of everybody and be like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like, look at this. And and instead, they're just like, well, and Phil does this. Phil is like an amazing CEO. But he's like, Phil does this where he's like, oh, look at this, these cool artsy games, you know, like they're so cool. God, whenever they're they on, did that indie game, they're on Game for like Pass and 10 he, minutes. Here, like, watch, oh, who cares? Watch, watch Forza for 20 minutes because, yes, like it's insane tech. It really is. It's the really? genre leading racing game. But it's like, God damn, nobody came here to watch Forza for 10 minutes or 30 minutes of side scrollers. Like, Literally, those are sweet on. games, but like, come on, man. Dude, but as soon as Forza, I kept going. I was like, I'm watching the fire pay- fireworks, not even firework all the way. Just song disappearing. For, for the like CFD three song, minutes. dude. Oh. This I, was definitely like what I think we see like Xbox's actual future as is that they really just care about making sure that those games that are being played right now are are highlighted. the game the for most. everybody, right? I mean, game as a service. I mean, that's that's the future basically so yeah. i oh, i i get i i had i had no problems with really anything that they showed like there was nothing they showed that i was like this is garbage like you know what i mean like there was a lot of high quality stuff there it was just I like that, it's the stuff they didn't game. show which is what hurt oh 100 percent. yeah they they could have thrown at least two games we we knew that would have been announced like avowed was announced like three years ago they showed point, gameplay though. like three years ago <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a, like a like, brief gameplay um i think they it, don't want to it, overshadow starfield and and redfall because that's the next two big blockbusters they didn't want to take I away think redfall looks pretty good I th- i'm pretty stoked for redfall i do I, yeah. I i'm excited for that i would choose redfall over starfield but tell me what you think because i was under the impression that it's gonna be like almost like a destiny or the division style game but based on the presentation yesterday it almost looked more like a campaign driven game it's yeah. got four player co-op obviously but is it what do you think is it going to be like a end game is it going to have like an end game kind of thing or is it going to be more like like uh i don't know i don't know what to compare it to i think it's going to be like left for dead yeah i think that's literally i think that's what they want to go for is like a left for yeah. dead but more cinematic more mm-hmm. um more story driven cuz like if you play back for Bl- back for blood and left for dead like it's a pretty linear very linear experience yeah. Um, and with this one, it just seemed like it was really about the core, like story and the and the and the gameplay for characters. It. And I'm, yeah, I was, I was pretty down for it, to be honest. I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to play it either way. I, I'm just yeah. I'm not quite sure yet what where it fits in, like the shooter, like PVE shooter. Piece of the pie, you know, like, is, yeah. is it going to have like an end game with like loot and stuff or is it going to be like a 
like a left for dead type thing or is it gonna be like a you know i'm just trying to figure out where it yeah. lands i think it just like i'd imagine it's just like one very big destiny campaign to be honest mm -hmm. it's just, you keep replaying the, the campaign like it's diablo or something. i know it's like game that. as That's a service but i don't know how like i don't know what the maybe yeah. maybe it's just you know campaign well, updates like dlc i, I don't know that's what Microsoft is really good at, delivering a game you're not sure what the hell you're supposed to be doing with. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, that all looks really good, though. So I, think I agree. I love arcane gameplay. I love it so much. I really, I still need to finish playing Prey, which is a huge, huge disappointment on my part. I really want to beat that game. It's so good. But I, I played Death Loop for, it. like, an hour, and then I stopped. I yeah, liked what I played, but I... I... I didn't even see Deathloop get an announcement or something like that. Like it's coming to Xbox. I don't. See, I'd rather it not be. be up on stage. It's got yeah. I, and that, see, who knows what they're gonna tuck in the extended thing? Maybe they'll have a few announcements like that. I've heard rumors that they're gonna do it like an actual, like old school EXO event this fall to show off games that are like further out. But yeah. I, I kind of don't believe it. I, I've heard it. Gamescom. But I feel like that's like copium. Like like oh, they're gonna show all the other stuff later, guys. Like. And what hurts so much is we know it's there. Like, all this stuff is either officially announced or, like, revealed through job listings. So it's not even, like, secret. Like, that's what hurts for me. And they've got QuakeCon, too. So they could do, like, Wolfenstein or Doom or Quake there, at, you know. So You know, it brings up a lot of interesting concern about, like, a multitude of the studios. I mean, between Bethesda and Xbox, like, I can understand that you finally got the acquisition and now you want to brag about it you want to talk about it, it's fine but like what are they going to do with like activision once that comes out like are they going to let activision just continue Dude, its own thing no all, one exactly all cares nine activision, activision studios does. are working on modern warfare 2 it like literally if you read the bottom of the modern warfare 2 logo it has every single activision studio listed on there not counting blizzard studios yeah every single one modern warfare 2 well we'll see I, the one thing I was really actually stoked for uh, with this with the show is actually Minecraft Legends. I'm pretty stoked for that actually. Yeah. What I can't is that like a I don't say it's a strategy game, but like what type? What would you compare it to? Like, uh, like a like a top down like beat 'em up or not a beat like a top down. Beat -em -up, at I guess, first yeah. I heard it was an RTS, but then I saw the gameplay. I'm like, this is definitely not an RTS. Mm -hmm. It's it reminded me of Brutal like Legend. Open world game. Yeah, that's exactly what I was like, about to say, but I was like, I don't know if that would make sense. No, it looks like Brutal Legend. Most people, Minecraft. most people didn't play Brutal Legends, so they should though um but yeah. no that's what i saw i'm like dude i minecraft is literally the best game in the world and i will always play anything that's minecraft related minecraft dungeons is super under related or under underrated significantly yes. underrated and underappreciated like I, I, the minecraft community honestly doesn't give a shit i think what they really helped hoped was going to happen was that it, the minecraft brand would take it further but i don't think people are you know what those kind of dungeon <clears throat> games, especially that acquisition that, that acquisition of all the acquisitions that Microsoft has made, that one is by far the best value wise. I, I think they paid what one billion dollars for Mojang, and they make like they make it has to be like five times more than that a year off of Mojang, yeah. like at least minimum between all like the merchandise and like it's crazy too. They didn't even buy Minecraft for the sake of it being Minecraft. They wanted to like do so much with education around that game. It's unreal. Like, when I was working at the Microsoft store, they had so much content around trying to turn Minecraft into this game that you sell to schools and that you bring people in for community programming. Like, I'm not even kidding, dude. Like, I believe they, you. Now, you can now buy uh, an educational copy of Office from, from Microsoft, and it comes with a copy of Minecraft and included with it. It's cool. It is funny, too. Like, it's just like, what the hell? That's what they bought it for. They didn't see it as like, oh, here's what we could do with all this Minecraft stuff. No, they were like, <laughs> sell it to schools. So, potentially, it, it's so funny that they did this to me. I think it's funny. Um, they, they go, okay, we're only going to do what's coming out in the next 12 months. And almost everything they showed literally was Xbox Game Pass, by the way. Um, but then, like, at the very end, they're like, oh, Kojima Productions is making an Xbox exclusive game. And Kojima says flat out, like, it's going to take a while. So, like, <laughs> it's all, it's it's all the next while. 12 months, except Kojima's game. Like, they had to put... Phil was like so excited. He just like, which I'm glad they put that in there. I wish they did more of that. I thought it was really funny that like that was the thing, but it feels like it's not even that important to really be hyped up about. Like, cool, it's confirmed, but like nothing to show us besides saying you've got it done. So that's just me though. <clears throat> uh, 
can't believe we had two trailers of Forza. Waste our time. We know Forza's good. Keep selling Forza. Uh, Grounded. Oh my god, it finally released preview. I have never been yeah. more excited to see Grounded for the fifth fucking time <laughs> at an Xbox show. Uh, same thing for Fallout 76. Same thing for Elder Scrolls Elder Online. Scrolls. Same thing they for gotta uh, do it just. They got you know they gotta everybody does that. They put it in there. What did you think of uh High on Life really surprised me, to be honest. I'm not even a Rick and Morty fan. Surprise. I'm not even a Rick and Morty fan, and I watched that trailer and I was like, this looks like I can't deny that this looks like interesting. It looks like fun. Yeah, like, like it looks I, like I said out loud, I was like this looks like an Xbox game, like yeah. from the original Xbox. Yeah, it does. It does have that weird vibe. Um, what'd you think of, I liked, I've been following Scorn for quite a while. I was glad they put that in there. Yeah. The actual release date. I'm pretty stoked for it too. I, I like my spooky games. Um, the Atlas announcement was pretty big with the Persona games. I feel like. Oh, I cringe so hard at that. Dude, it's gotta be. Bad I know, games. I know. But it was like, what, 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 it makes me feel sad and happy at the same time because Phil Spencer has been trying to make it a point for like literally like a decade to try to get support from Japan. And you could tell he like, like he made it a point. Like we got, a, we got team Ninja making a new game. We got Hideo Kojima and Kojima productions. And we got persona. And you could tell inside Phil Spencer is like about to explode with happiness that like he's yeah. accomplished this mission. And I watched, That's a huge like, accomplishment. I watched the persona thing and I'm like, I don't give a, like they're showing like they're they're parading like a Dreamcast game on the stage like Persona dude. Three. I'm just like, dude, like come on, man. Big, big games though, bro. Like Xbox has really needed them for a very I long know. time, and, and they're on Even Game like, Pass, which is like amazing. Yeah, and, and like what's crazy about it is that like Xbox fans, like sure, are probably like saying, "Get us Persona, get us Persona." But I can guarantee you, every Persona fan out there is like, "This game needs to be so much more accessible to everybody mm -hmm. else." So pers I'm happy to see that Persona fans are happy for other people who've never been able to play it. Yeah. And to the point, like, I would like to make specifically about this conference is that they showed a lot of games that we already are aware of. Mm -hmm. And they're, and obviously Microsoft is significantly more focused on selling games that they have right now. Mm -hmm. And when, when people want to, like, bash Xbox, it's like, oh, everyone's already played that game before. And it's just like, no, dude. Game, like Xbox's long game right now isn't trying to sell you a new <clears> game. It's trying to sell you sh stuff that's it's, already available. There's so many... The, the, the gaming market is gradually growing every single day yeah, every single year that's like it. you can't just ignore that there's so and much content that you can just sell already that exists. if you it's easy for somebody especially like like not to like isolate myself like, like me so like to be like oh i already like because there's a lot of these games that are getting remade that i was like basically already an adult when i played it like for example two of the big ones this this week uh resident Evil 4 remake and the last of us like i played those games and I'm like, I just play like they're great, great. I love them. Legendary games. Right. And like that comes to my mind, like I've already played this. But then like you look back at the year it was released, like these games are like 10, 15 years old. And it's like there are so many kids now who never experienced those games who are now in that age range that I was when I played those games. But they were yeah. like five or not even born yet when they came out. So it's like, OK, it kind of does make sense to remake these games because I think The Last of Us 1 is a bit of a stretch, but they need to sell it on PC. I think the remake yeah. for The Last of Us 1 is a little bit of a, like a cheap shot for the fans, but it needs to be sold on PC. And I'm pretty sure they don't want to like port over a game that has not aged, I think, as well graphically. And that's just my personal opinion. I, I think, think the, the gameplay Last of Us hasn't aged great. well in the first yeah, Last of Us. Uh, it hasn't. But um, I, I think I mean, like, it has to be sold on PC. So I Resident think the Evil Last 4, of though, Us remakes look great. I think The Last of Us remake is literally all about one thing. They know the last, the, so they had The Last of Us 1, which was like a universally like loved game, right? Like top 10 game of all time, like amazing. And then The Last of Us 2 came out and was extremely divisive. And it's kind of like, even though it's still sold like 10 million copies, I think they said, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a stain on the franchise because so many people are like, I hated this game. I'm never supporting it again. So now I feel like Sony's like, um, Give him the first one again, like, like, just, just go back, you know, like, it's like it's almost like a panic move. I feel to try to like rekindle that, like, that love because they're like, well, we can't lose The Last of Us, like, we can't, like, yeah. you know. I think uh, selling it for seventy bucks is like too much of a stretch, too. I think that's a huge amount of money just for a game that's been out. If for only that they long. had like, PlayStation P Game Pass. They do. It just released today, actually. <laughs> but it's not going to have The Last of Us on it. 
I mean, it, it eventually will. Ten years from now, probably. Yeah. Ten years from now, I think Last of Us Two is actually on there right now. Same is thing it? with Spider Man Miles Morales. Yeah. They're just not doing the day one releases. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not day one releases. Um, but I mean, like to your point about the Resident Evil one, I think I feel like Resident Evil Four is long overdue for some sort of pre. It's a 2015 especially... or a 2005 release, so it's been yeah. 17 years. <laughs> 17 years and like the game looks incredible uh i've actually never had a chance to play resident Evil before so this game is for people like me Mm -hmm. that's why like i don't get salty about it it's like i mean you can see the progress change though you can see like the definition of progress oh yeah those types of remasters last of us was just like 70 bucks for this (laughs) yeah it's 70 bucks for that it's tough It, it the last of us really is tough i mean it's one of the games that, like, again, I hold it as, like, a top 10 game of all time. I almost want an excuse to, like, go back and replay it. So, like, I'm kind of happy that, like, there's going to be, like, an updated version. But at the same time, I know that, like, that $70 price tag, too, I might be, like, uh, to revisit a game, I already know how it's going to play out, you know? Because, like, it's like that you can't go home again thing. Like, you you can only experience something for the first time once, no matter how great oh, it is. Oh, like... Yeah. You know, like that first time you see a band, it's usually always going to be you can see them 10 times. But that first time is always going to be, you know, a special time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the next like the, I, I, I as a kid, right, we were playing Halo was like, all right, this is great. This is great. And at a point you're just like playing Halo for many different reasons, at least on the campaign side. When Halo 2 anniversary came out, though, like that was my last. Holy shit. Like, mm-hmm. wow. Because uh, those blur graphics were still insane mm-hmm. freaking amazing Halo 2 anniversary uh, still looks good yeah uh the the audacity of like xbox to release their next 12 months graphic though and include like games they didn't even like showcase <laughs> like uh, halo infinite after, like halo infinite like call of duty modern <laughs> warfare like the callisto project like hogwarts legacy oh uh, god they even put dead space in this as well for like literally next year the in the fall Dead Not Space is January. Dead it Space is January. January. I, was yeah. wrong. I was wrong. Resident Evil 4 is in there? I don't know. I, just, I was like, why, why, are you, why are you putting all this stuff in here? Yeah. Like, we I mean, they're there. They're prominent games coming to Xbox. I guess. I mean, like, why not? Like, I, That's just me. I'm being... Yeah, I, I, I get it. I would have loved to have it. seen a new Dead Space trailer. Or a Res- I mean, they showed a Resident Evil 4 little bit of it today at Capcom's uh, the, thing. The, the lack of games, though that we know need that help more than Sea of Thieves, more than... I can't believe we didn't see the Halo Infinite Battle Royale. I am in disbelief yeah. that they didn't am, include I, that. I'm blown away at that, too. I'm like, what the hell? So they either got to be saving that for tomorrow, or they're saving it for Gamescom once Season 3 Maybe. starts getting closer. Maybe. I think it's or, either one of those two. Or it's a lot further away than we thought, and like it's not coming anytime soon. Maybe it's more than 12 months out. Like, worst case scenario, maybe it is. Like, who knows? I mean, we we know that Halo Infinite technically has realistically been in development for, like, almost barely even three years. Like, we know that. Since they, like, sure. rebooted it. Like, rebooted yeah. development. Yeah. Yeah, like, three years. That's a that's a short amount of ta- time for a game. Well, so. it's, it's a different developer, too. It's certain affinity. <clears throat> yeah. But, I mean, like, they have they have everything more figured out there. But, you know, the fact that... I think most people I I was just more upset that we didn't see anything about the game versus like, you know, we can wait on it versus that. I don't know I, how I'm some of it. these things that they could have some of the things that I feel like they could have hyped. I mean, Sony did the same thing in fairness, right? Sony was super conservative with their state of play, too. Um, there's a lot of I these things intentional. There's a lot of these things that you can generate a lot of hype with in like a, literally like a 60 second trailer. Like, you could have shown Halo Infinite Battle Royale in 60 seconds. You could have shown Avowed in 60 seconds. You could have shown Fable in two minutes. Like, like you don't need to do these, like, all-out big, you know, showcases. You can put together a banger of a trailer just to get some hype and then, say, coming 2023, yeah. 2024, whatever. It's not E3 anymore, you no. know? We, we can't expect to... I mean, like, this is me answering like my own thoughts, my own questions, and part of the podcast. Is just, like, we, can't ex- <laughs> we can't expect like everything to just be there and then like ex- yeah. expect Xbox to have it all. I'll accept that, uh, despite how much I hate it. 
But at the same time, maybe this is like the industry shift on how we look at these like newly yearly announcements and stuff like that. Because this is the first time in history over the past almost like 30 years, E3 has not been here. Yeah. So maybe this is just the industry shift into figuring out what it wants to do going forward with these kind of conferences, or at least these procedurally yearly, these annual like games announcement stuff, because there's no real place to do that anymore what did you think what this is a perfect uh follow-up what did you think of summer game fest because i personally as i watched summer game fest i thought that having one and i'm not saying we should go to oh, literally only one but one showcase for a lot of these uh publishers actually worked a lot better than ea having their own show ubisoft having their own show Activision having their own show because a lot of those individual publishers they put together these 60 90 minute showcases that are filled with like 70 minutes of garbage and you wait through it all to see like because it, it becomes like a shareholder thing right like parade mm -hmm. everything out so you're share but if you're like a hardcore gamer you really are watching it for like one or two but games you, you know like like Mass Effect or uh, EA or something like that so I, I thought Summer Game Fest worked a lot better for a lot of these third-party publishers who would uh, just merge. No, absolutely <laughs> agree. Like, that's what I wanted to happen, actually, with Xbox, was that they can get let Summer Game Fest handle all the third-party stuff, and then Xbox can focus on Xbox. They now have an actual catalog of and developers who can all just showcase an hour's worth of content in, mm -hmm. like, 15 to 10 minutes to 5 minutes is real, mm -hmm. so they have those things. That's what Phil, I was about. I thought Summer Game Phil's, Fest was great. Phil still had to get his little artsy indie games in there. And, like, in fairness, like, some of these games, like, are literally built on the back of being included in some of these conferences. Like, they would never get, like, the, the light of day, you know, like, if Sony or Microsoft didn't, like, shine a light on them. So, like, I get it to an extent. It's just, like, sometimes it's, like, and, and believe me, I love indie games like devolver like i'm such a big fan new blood i'm such a big fan mm -hmm. but some of them i'm just like oh look it's another Zelda clone oh look oh, it's is, this you know been an email yeah <laughs> what oh, oh that game could have been an email yeah yeah <laughs> it's I um i i really hope that like maybe next year we can we can like rely on summer game fest because they, i think they did a great job jeff keely and keely and his i think he does great job. i yeah. think he's a really good ambassador for Although, wait industry. a minute. I want to cringe so hard during the entire Last of Us everything. <laughs> like, literally, like, 15 minutes of just pure, absolute, concentrated, like, cringe, dude. I was just like, Jeff, quit fangirling. You've met Troy Baker, like, a Sony million times already. You know a lot of those companies pay for their God. spots. He's I'm got just it. like, I was like, you met these people. You text them. You probably have, like, mimosas with them, like, dude, every week. He is, he's the biggest Kojima fan fanboy that there has ever been do you remember when he got on stage it was like one of the early game awards and it was like it was the year that kojima was basically imprisoned by konami and he could not talk about metal gear solid mm -hmm. 5 he couldn't leave Jap they wouldn't let him go to america to accept the award and jeff Keeley like put them on blast and made kojima yeah. out to be like like you know, basically the biggest victim in the world and i'm not saying he, that. he wasn't but it was just like you, you could tell Keeley was like personally slighted by it. Like you've you've disrespected Hideo Kojima, and I will not stand for this. Like <laughs> <laughs> you disrespected the man who gave you a name. I mean, really. Well, in fairness, he's right. Yeah. But but, <laughs> but no, that that last fifteen minutes of The Last of Us could have. I honestly, I would rather like watch a Madden announcement than ever have to watch that kind of cringe again. <laughs> oh, Which, okay. by the way, That's pushing it. I, I can now actually, like, for the first time in my life, uh, at least in my gaming life, say I was marked safe from watching another FIFA and Madden announcement. <laughs> Thank God. Um, yeah, I, I, I personally, you know, Overwatch 2, free to play, the Junker Queen, early, early access this fall, I really liked. Diablo 4 looks incredible. Um, I, I can't wait to play that. Um, Summer Game Fest... They had a lot of good stuff there. What do you? Th I know you're a big Dead Space guy. What do you think about oh God, Callisto Protocol mind, versus Dead Space? I, I asked uh, Maz this last week too. So we've got Callisto Protocol coming out in December, and I think Dead Space is in January. So they're they're both the same game, and that's all I need them to be. 
Do you think they are? I mean, do you think Callisto Protocol is going to be really close to Dead Space? Yeah. Do you think they're going to yeah. diverge at all? or Which one do you think is going to be better? I, I think they're both the same exact game. I think at this point, to like say which one do you think is going to be better, like that, that's not even a comparison. They're, 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 they're the same thing. Same. And like one game, Dead Space 3 came out in like 2011 versus Callisto okay. Project, which came out like almost 11 years later. Like, yeah, they're, they're different games. They're, they're hardly comparable. And we know that the same guy who literally created both of them. Yeah. Like, this is exactly like I was happy to see that this game is going to be exactly what I want it to be. And despite it not being Dead Space, like the game looks sick as hell. What's it's the same the, guy who made it. What's the concept? Is it like you're on a prison moon or something like that? Right. Like you're a prisoner yeah. or are you a prisoner yourself? And like it's, it's being whatever these I don't want to call them necromorphs, but, uh, you know, necromorph like things are taking over the, the prison mood and you got to break out, I guess. Is that going to be the plot? Yeah. Yep, pretty much. And another fun fact, it takes place in the same universe as PUBG. They fixed that. They they d undid that recently. Undid thank it? God. Oh, yes, man. thank God. Because I feel like that was like craft and like really forcing them to do that. And I didn't really see much of a problem with it. But I was like, I mean, I'm not <clears throat> dropping onto like Miramar or anything like that. Um, yeah. But <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I'm stoked for it. I think no the one game likes looks Miramar, like, cool so. as hell. Um, the only the only complaint I have about it, and this goes for Starfield too, is that the armor looked weak. It looked mid. It looked like I had no like drip at all in any of those games. Generic, generic as hell. Literally, the Starfield is NASA spacesuit. <laughs> That's literally what Dude, it is. I'm telling you, I think everything about Starfield looks generic. I when they when he first pulled out the gun and went in the first person, he's shooting enemies that are like basically just letting him shoot them in the back and they just like sitting there and like they slowly stand up as they get like on easy mode shot uh, I, I, uh i did dislike the, the i think the biggest dislike i had about starfield was probably like the exp bars being smack in the middle of like the rifle <laughs> i was like jesus that. christ i was they'll, like get that out of here yeah i don't care about my experience that. like get per kill i know what am i playing i'm so immersed in this you know st i'm stealthing through this base Ooh, xp Five XP, shit, dude! Yeah. I can't wait to spin that. I saw somebody, and I can't tell if this person was serious or, or capping, but his tweet was, uh, he he was super disappointed with Starfield. One thousand planets was below his expectation, uh, and he was expecting at least thirteen hundred. <laughs> I was like, uh, how do you I, think that is? There's a lot of comparisons now between Starfield and No Man's Sky. Yeah, I mean. I've heard that No Man's Sky has has become a good game. That they've updated it a lot and they've really turned the corner on it because it was super disappointing at first. Yeah. Um, and Bethesda has earned that reputation recently too. You know, with Fallout seventy six, Elder Scrolls Online, a lot of people didn't like them at first, and then after years of updates, people are like, "Oh, these are actually pretty good games now." So I kind of wonder say, if Starfield is the next Cyberpunk. I've been saying that from the beginning. That's what I'm afraid but. of too. But the game. <clears throat> looks good i mean like cyberpunk also looks good whenever they show it's amazing too doesn't it's have really keanu good. either so i mean <laughs> starfield um, what do you got i whenever it comes to like starfield like in the comparison to no man's sky it's just like what like the most easiest most imaginative thing i think anybody no matter what kind of gamer you are is wow it'd be cool if there was a game where i could like literally drive and out like drive like ride a spacecraft to just outer space and just go anywhere i think that's a very basic ass like concept yeah it obviously is. the only thing holding it back is just the technology and like well, they said that they had this game in 20 years i want to say 20 years of lore building and i think they're also capping on it they're planning on, they were they had the concept 20 years ago basically yeah. is how i took it as i it all comes down to okay you've got a thousand planets same thing for no man's sky what how interesting are those planets like are, is there a lot of interesting things on them or because yeah. like i was watching it and i'm like this planet is just completely empty except for this little pirate base and he's gonna kill the three guys inside it and then like that's what it comes down to that's what it's gonna be what's the quality in this scale is it is it really great like or is it just, oh, hey, we got a thousand planets and they're all boring except like the three of them, which have the main story missions on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, 100 percent. And that's that's my fear, too. It's just like, <clears throat> oh, wow, here's story mission planets and here's garbage that is not yeah. really useful. 
uh like a thousand planets like no one's like there's gonna be so much nothing to explore there yeah that's I what like i mean that's, that's it's just it's just so gimmicky i think it's just more of a flex than what they actually expect you to be doing didn't, but who knows what they do with expansions in the game didn't mass effect 3 have some system where you have to like manually scan all these planets and like every once in a while you'd find one like oh i can actually land here like every mass effect is like that <laughs> yeah yeah i, I couldn't remember if it was just the third one or or what but so Mass Effect 2 was technically like a much bigger scale of it. You can select it, but it's more about the harvesting of what's on the planet's like resources or versus landing right? on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I honestly like I don't care about landing on planets. Like what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Like just That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like you know, everybody says that same thing on No Man's Sky. Like, yeah, there's so many places to go and, and it's like what? L like I, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I just want to shoot some people. The cool thing that like No Man's Sky can't that actually does do at least on a technolo like technology side is that it's got procedurally generated everything. Yes, quite literally yes. procedurally everything. That's beyond cool, actually. Yeah. Too bad that you can't actually do anything with it. Besides right. Just look, <laughs> look at, at it. Literal cookie, cookie and glue cut, like cookie cutter glued products. Like it's an it's like actual that. mixed gingerbread man of like plants, aliens. That and game was it like Proteus? Like it was, it was the same thing. Like you can walk around and like look at these like random pixelated animals, and it was like procedurally generated, but you couldn't do anything. Like it was like a you play it for twenty minutes, you're like, oh, this is really cool. That's it. Cool. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just excited to see what the lore is. Like clearly, that's what Bethesda's <laughs> always been best at. Besides, Bethesda's never been good at like gameplay. Let's be real. Like they've like hack and slash Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty dog shit for the most part. Fallout 3 was like a good attempt at doing nuclear apocalypse, apocalypse but like gunplay on that was so bad. And then like Fallout 4 tried doing a lot better with introducing more modern mechanics, but it's even then bad. it was still bad. Yeah. Like, but this is been good at, at <laughs> gameplay. No. It's always been lore. It's always been about like the choices and stuff that you Yeah, it's it. a role playing game and it, in the yeah. truest extent. So if, if we'll people are excited to play the game for the combat, I'm sorry to tell you, you're looking forward for the wrong reasons. But Space Fights is actually pretty dope. I'm pretty interested to see how that goes. I think what? Space Fights. The space oh, fights. Space Fights. Like I said, Face Fights. What the hell's a Face, face Fight? You just fight people with faces. Yeah, no, I mean, not many games. Uh, the last one I could think of that did both like on, f on foot combat and space combat was like Halo Reach. And they only had one level worth of space combat. You know, people also keep comparing No Man's Sky, and I'm just like, dude, do, do people not know what Star Citizen is? Like, oh, this Jesus. is more of like a Star Citizen game than a No Man's Sky game. Was Star Citizen the one with uh, Mark Hamill in it? Or is that the other Star game? Probably it's the other Star game. I don't think Star Citizen... Star Citizen <sighs> is like a early access as hell game that's been in development for like more than 20 years. years. <laughs> I, I'm Almost. pretty sure, like, the debut trailer for it had, like, Mark Hamill in it. I gotta look this up. It's either Star Citizen... Or, dude, I gotta Google this. Somebody <laughs> Google Star Citizen Mark Hamill. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. I'm looking it up. Is, and it's, like... Uh, uh, I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. Star Citizen Squadron 42. Yeah, Is it there? <laughs> With Jillian Anderson. Oh, man. It was in 2019. I, I always get Star Citizen and EVE Online confused. <laughs> I don't know why. But the difference with Star Citizen <clears throat> clearly is that this is a game that's been working in a very, 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 very long time. So. Very long time. Um, some of the other games that got announced at Summer Game Fest. Uh, Stormgate, which is the old StarCraft RTS team's new game. Uh, I thought the trailer for it was god awful. But yes, I am looking... it's so boring. It, it, the, the CG was like literally 1999 level CG too and I don't know if they did that on like purpose or just kind of as a throwback I, I am excited for the game but uh, Routine which is a Mick Gordon scored game which that alone makes me uh, want to buy that, it okay yeah I was like dude I remember this game being announced forever ago and then like seeing it I'm like dude this looks dope as what hell about man the other Mick Gordon game Atomic Heart I think that's looking really good. I don't care much about Atomic Heart. No? I've never seen it yet. Isn't that game like made in like Russia or something? Uh, I don't know if it's made in Russia or it's from that region of the world, at least. I don't know where the developer is actually based. I remember seeing like the announcement for it last year at E3 for the Xbox conference. And I was like, that looks weird. I don't care about it. It looks a little bit like Fallout meets Bioshock. 
Yes, that's exactly what it looks like. <clears throat> but with a Mick but Gordon a score, better. which if, if it did have Mick Gordon involved, honestly, I probably wouldn't care about it either. But like Mick Gordon, dude, like, can't can't miss it. Um, about Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good actually. Um, I actually have a uh, like for my work. For those who don't know, I work for an esports organization called the Esports Gaming League, very separate from what Nemesis does. And one of my guy, like one, like the guy who does like all of our contract stuff, is a ex World of Tanks pro. Holy and now he's like, and now he's like in this role, and then just like out of the blue one I day hate he goes, that "Game by the way." <laughs> out of the blue, he goes, "Warhammer game coming out by uh, this this team." gonna be pretty good talking gonna try and talk to some people over there i'm like that that's the most left field thing you've ever said to me you're like seven feet tall the most handsome man probably i've ever laid eyes on and like you just throw warhammer out there you like what it's like, i got thinking so about random. this and i was like I, I like really confused myself because as i watched netflix this past week and ha they have for the past three years and all of the hollywood industry has done this adapt more and more video game ips uh whether it be an animated series or movie or television series you know the halo series we got uh, arcane every every video game ip is being turned into a some type of show Cyber, movie cyberpunk anime coming cyberpunk out uh castlevania nocturne you know and, and i got thinking about Everything warhammer else. we get like like six warhammer or warhammer 40k games a year like they're in every genre they're in like rts co-op shooter uh like like real uh turn-based games there's non-stop warhammer games so i'm not complaining but there's never been like to my knowledge like i was like where's like the warhammer 40k like animated series like where's the warhammer like uh i don't know like like cg movie because it's got a, such a huge fan base it seems like a no-brainer and i was just like the lore what? of that game is insanely huge like yeah it's it takes so like vast. i heard it with somebody said that uh it took them 30 years to catch up on the Warhammer 40k like universe like they started like like trying to like learn it and it took them 30 years like they started in like the 90s or something can I imagine like just <clears throat> jumping in on that as a story coordinator for the game yeah. like, <laughs> fresh out of the blue don't know anything about it <laughs> 21 years old fresh out of college yeah um like no, okay start reading here and Warhammer. when you turn 55 you should be able to write your first story in our universe you know, I heard Halo did really well on on Paramount Plus. I'm pretty sure they should sign with them because I heard that they have a really good show with Halo. Yeah, there's no way that they 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 fumble the bag with that game. Yeah, no way. Um, anything but, else that that you saw in the Summer Game Fest or Xbox? Wait, go. Uh, the Honkai Impact team, the people who make like Honkai Impact Genshin, uh, and Genshin Impact as well. Um, they have two new games. One they announced. I actually forgot what the name is. Isn't it called like it. zero? It's like three Z's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, three Z's and another one that's a brand new game. That one's gonna be like a space setting game. This other one was like a neo cyberpunk esque kind of game. And you know, I didn't play Genshin Impact a lot, but I love, absolutely love, like what they do with those games. I mean, they're monetized to hell. All just gotcha games, basically, mm -hmm. is what they are. But damn, they're fun. Damn, they're interesting characters. And damn, it's got really cool stories. Super high quality. I love super high quality. Yeah. So I'm excited for the <clears throat> for the 3Z one. That one looks pretty dope because I like that. The space one, I was a little bit of a mixed bag on it. Uh, I think it's because we had seen so many space games already. I was just like, Jesus yeah. Christ, how many more space games is going to be out? I have a friend who gets triggered so hard at the mention of Exo, or uh, why did I, say? I almost going to say Exo Primal, Genshin Impact. Because he's like, I played that piece of trash when it was called Breath of the Wild, and Breath of the Wild will never be matched, and blah, blah, blah. Like, he goes on this huge, and I, like, one day I made him so mad because I sent him, like, how much money Breath of the Wild had made versus how much money Genshin Impact had made. <laughs> Genshin Impact, like, like has made, like, triple the amount of money. Like, it's not even oh, close. Yeah. And he was so pissed off. He's like, they just stole Nintendo's idea, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, blame Nintendo for not capitalizing on it. You got no one else to be mad at, like... What a bold statement to say that they copied Nintendo, considering the fact that Zelda is literally a ripoff of basically every Far Cry game ever made. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you climb up towers, world. See, see land, and jump off cool tower, doing cool things. Evolved open world a little bit in a different way. Yeah, 
we actually had a conversation about this today at work where somebody was just like breath of the wild is like the best uh zelda game and i was like nope it's not if anything it's probably like one of the worst in terms of gameplay i mean everybody's gonna have their own personal favorite my personal favorite i mean i love the original i loved uh a link to the past my personal favorite is probably actually wind waker i i yeah. it was the time for me i was about i don't know 14 15 16 probably and uh such I a loved creative Wind Waker. game. Yeah. Just the cell shading and everything about that. Like playing it on the Wii U. That game has aged visually so freaking well. Like it mm -hmm. does not look one bit worse than it did way back then. If they were managed <laughs> to remaster this game, like what are they gonna do to remaster it? It just looks it looks wonderful. You don't no matter have to. which way you look yeah. at it, you have to do anything to it. You can just release it in a higher resolution. Uh, I think that they are actually releasing a uh, a switch like master pack for like ocarina of time and wind waker yeah. uh, here coming soon i think i saw like a like a listing for that somewhere in leak so i, I thought breath of the wild it. was um i i totally saw it made it great i thought the weapon breaking thing was absolutely game breaking and terrible yes. like i yes. like i was like yes i played it for like yes. three four hours and i'm like love like i don't like open world games that much but i'm like i love this game's open world it's very charming like i like almost everything about it the weapon breaking thing is so bad that I'm I'm quitting. I, I I'm not playing it. It's disruptive. You had to go to a stupid menu to change your weapons. It was not. It was like a it, horrible game design decision. Game. I don't want a survival game. I yeah. wanted Zelda. I wanted a, I wanted the same thing I've been playing for years. Which yeah. Is temple, 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 done. <laughs> don't don't fix what's not broken. Not the same temple with the same reward, fifty times <laughs> over and over again. Uh, bless you uh but uh no uh, i really hope that um hope that, that that listing is real is true about wind waker because it's the most unique one I think, oh it's so amazing <clears throat> anything else you saw i mean we got some we got more stuff to go through here but anything um, else let me double check off the top I, of your I, head I, nothing off the top of my head i think i've covered just about everything i think that the cocoon game looks pretty cool the same guy who made limbo and inside yeah that'll probably okay. be good yeah, I was pretty stoked about that. Um, oh, Hollow Knight Silk Song, that's coming out too. Yes. I'm stoked for that. Um, but other than that, like nothing. No, I mean, before we move I'm not off, disappointed. Before we move off of kind of not off of because we'll go back to it. I'm sure. Uh, they didn't make a big deal about this at their conference, but they announced that Xbox Cloud Streaming app is going to be built into all Samsung TVs, and I feel like that is a much bigger deal than people really realize because. You will essentially be able to play and stream Xbox games without owning any device other than your television. That's like a huge deal. Not, not just Game Pass also, but also NVIDIA Now, um, mm -hmm. as well as like another, I think it's EA? No, there's not another sure. one though. There's a third one, but no, 100% agree with that. Like that is massive. You could buy a new TV and play the latest games with it. Without I saw, any other digital money on I that. saw somebody uh, bring up Somebody said, like, why is it only Samsung TVs? And, you know, they said, well, it's going to be more, but this is just the start. You know, that's where we're starting is with Samsung TVs. And then I saw somebody else's analysis. You know how they just brought Fortnite to Xbox cloud streaming? Mm -hmm. Somebody was like, if you rolled out Fortnite via, X uh, via Xbox cloud streaming to, like, every, like, te television company at the same time, Azure would just, like, collapse in on itself and just, like, mushroom cloud. Because there would be so many new people streaming f just Fortnite. Uh, through their yeah. television, because everybody with a TV who's never even played a video game before could would see an ad and be like, "Oh, you can play Fortnite on your TV," and like Azure would just like it couldn't sustain it. That it needs like a more and now can you Microsoft? Yeah. No, I think it's a great idea, and it's funny to watch people like whenever that happened, people were like tearing apart Xbox because actually it's the coolest thing to do is hate on Xbox. They're saying like, wow, you don't even need a console anymore. Like, why even buy an Xbox? I'm like, why are people still arguing about this? Like, why are yeah. people, we're like almost like, like seven years into this knowing that like Xbox. Did you hate no on Netflix when you heard that you didn't need to buy a DVD player anymore? Like, were you like pissed off about that? Like, no, yeah. it's a brilliant move. And not to mention, like, PlayStation's going to do the same exact thing. They're everybody will. Do the, everybody will. They're going to do the exact same damn thing. It's just like, what the hell is like everyone's deal with trying to like just capture this much clout this early in the game? Like, you know what? I didn't, I didn't mention this earlier, but I find it really interesting that 
Kojima's Xbox game is is streaming specifically. And and I I really want to know like it's cl- it's a cloud game. And I really want to know what he's got cooking in his mind that makes it have to be a cloud game. Because Kojima has done some weird interesting stuff with hardware and stuff over the years like PlayStation 1 Psycho Mantis would read your uh your PlayStation memory card and like recite to you the games you've been playing, which at the time was like mind blowing. Yeah. Um, and then I know his silent Hill game was supposed to be like sending you text messages, like, like, like creepy text messages to your phone. So I I really wonder why is it that Kojima is so dead set on making a, a cloud game? Like, what is it? What is it's weird to me. If I try to get inside of his own head, knowing what I know about cloud is mainly cloud is just all about like platform and user experiences. Right. Mm -hmm. So like imagine just being able to choose, like play this game and pick up where you go to like another device. But the game changes drastically in how you play that game specifically without there being any additional like game, like developed game stuff to it maybe it scales depending on the game and it automatically detects that so if i'm playing a horror game if i'm playing on my xbox right and it just says hey uh you gotta to continue forward with this and i don't think kojima would do that but just say say for example it says you need to hop on to another device to do this to Mm -hmm. go somewhere else you need to like walk with your phone and like Mm. maybe the cloud's gonna track where you are walking that's an interesting idea you know maybe around the house or something like that. that's an interesting idea that's, I mean, that's hmm. not far from what he's done with PlayStation when it came to inserting <laughs> controller in the memory, like into controller yeah. slot too. That's interesting. I, I do. They didn't announce that it's going to be a horror game, but I, I'm like 99.9% that this is a horror game. Like, I, because he was going to do Silent Hills, he didn't get to do it. And, you know, I feel like if he's going to diverge, he's like, especially in team up with Xbox, it's not just, it's not another Death Stranding game. Mm-hmm. But another, he's not going to go back to like a Metal Gear Solid style game. It's not going to be a stealth action game. It's going to be something different. So, yeah, horror makes sense. <clears throat> Imagine because like I'm pretty sure I, I don't remember if PS5 actually does have a web browser on it. I think it does. But like imagine just like playing the game that he has <laughs> an Xbox game. You stream it to your web browser. Maybe there's like an Easter egg there. Speaking of which, uh, Netflix announced a bunch of stuff this week and they added more exclusive games from devolver specifically to their netflix gaming streaming thing and i i have to wonder how much they're gonna go into this because they've been making a few announcements like that like they've added this game that game to their netflix and i haven't yet to talk to somebody who even knows that netflix gaming exists um but i I do wonder if they're gonna become a player in the space because they're they're in a weird spot as a company uh they lost like a ton of value this last six months and i could see gaming being a very alluring endeavor to them because they need something new they need a new revenue source yeah i think i'm glad you actually brought that up i forgot i looked it up just to look at the game list and they're releasing a queen's gambit version game oh jesus they're just releasing chess is it chess yeah chess yeah, the game chess. basically um but I uh, know, I mean, like they got some pretty cool, like pretty look interesting looking games. Like Lucky Luna looked pretty cool. Uh, I remember seeing a trailer for that on Twitter. Um, and um, I mean, like as far as where Netflix is going with this, I don't actually see it like really doing much to be honest. Yeah, it depends on how much they want to push it. Yeah, I don't think they have a game. Like I don't think they have a catalog. Not yet, at least. Even within no. their stuff, well, even with what they have in terms of IP of Netflix IP, to turn yeah. it into a game and people want it, you know. Yeah. I mean, well, like, I got, can't do, Devolver's can't do made like three or four games for them. Um, but and that's what I mean. Like, if they want to start signing like little like games like that, o- almost like uh, you know, like th- there's been a lot of street, a lot of games on Stadia or uh, Luna that are just more simplistic games. Like, I think Facebook has like a new Pac Man game, like stuff like that. And then if they actually want to push it, like that's the thing. All these companies dabbling in like. We've talked about it before, like cloud streaming, except for like Xbox. None of them have like pushed it at all. It's like, oh, yeah, we got our toe in the water and then we're just going to leave it there. Like if people come, they come, you know, it's it's kind of an odd approach. Yeah, probably because, again, <laughs> infrastructure. I'm pretty sure like the only real major ones that you have are just going to be AWS, Azure, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Alibaba, uh, Oracle. What's Netflix uh, like- on? 
I don't know. I think they actually have their. I think they have their own infrastructure. So I, I would think they would have massive server availability then. I don't know. I agree. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever experienced a day where Netflix was down the same no. way like PlayStation or Xbox has been down. No. But then again, I'm not on Netflix every single day. Yeah, I mean, I, um, yeah, that's true. Way. Um, I don't know. Actually, I could double check that here. I know Discord uses Google. Hello, is it Gail? Gail. Thanks for the first time chat, dude. Gail, Gail Thrill, dude. <sighs> Gale thrill. Um, uh, speaking of Gale, Nightingale was at the show again. I, how did I miss I've, that? What did they I've, show? They showed a little bit of gameplay. Did they? Yeah. I gotta go back and watch it. I, I missed it. Nothing about that game looks good. I, I'm looking forward to that one. Really? I mean, I didn't like... see the new trailer, so maybe I won't be after I see the new trailer, but it's ex Bioware. That's why I'm interested in it. Nothing about being a diplomat between two different freaking like factions sounds fun. You gotta be all. a diplomat. That's I thought that's what it was. Oh no, not Nightingale, not Nightingale. I'm thinking of uh, Greenfall. Oh, okay, Night Nightingale is a survival game. Yeah, that's... Nightingale was there though. Yeah, I, I didn't watch and it. I, and I and I I didn't miss it. I I, or I missed it somehow. I forgot. <clears throat> What's up, Corey? Um, let's move on. I, I know you missed some of uh. Well, let's just let's just do Modern Warfare Two, because they revealed Modern Warfare Two, which is pretty pretty huge reveal. Sure yeah. Uh, they've got nine studios working on it. Uh, they showed campaign footage. Um, they showed a whole lot of stuff. It's it's a unified engine for Call of Duty for the first time ever. So all the Call of Duty games are going to be on one engine going forward. Yeah. What did you think but of it? The reveal. I thought it. I thought it looks pretty good. I mean, yeah. I don't really care much for the campaign. I think the original Modern either. Warfare Two experience was actually wonderful. It was a good campaign back yeah. then, that that day. But you can't exactly sell me on like campaigns these yeah. days anymore. Uh, Tim the Tapman was in it, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> um, and um, so was like Pete Davidson apparently, which I yeah. which brings me a question: Who who cares about Pete? Who was ever sold on anything because Pete Davidson was? I in know. It? Uh, my my favorite thing ever related to Pete Davidson is this was like before he really got big, uh, before like the Kim Kardashian thing, before the Kanye feud. One of my friends said to me once, who's that guy in SNL? I can't remember his name. It looks like a crackhead. And one of my other friends was like, oh, you're talking about Pete Davidson. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and that was well, like. A... Yeah, Pete, Pete, you go on. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you. <laughs> Uh, all I could think of, I I do think Modern Warfare Two looks good. I'm very interested in in, uh, in Warzone Two more than anything, but I I always say this when I watch like demos of games being played, any game. I mean, you can say the same thing about Starfield, Modern Warfare Two reveal. Like nobody plays games the way that they show them. Like it's always like like the Modern Warfare Two reveal, you know, like the characters walking. Like super slow, like he's like actually in SEAL Team Six, yeah. you know, like like checking every corner, and it's like, yeah. And then you watch that a real person play, and you're just sprinting everywhere, and it's like spray, 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 spray on the spray, spray. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like like I I know it looks cool for the presentation, but I mean, there, there's some, some of the other games like I'll watch people play like a first person shooter, and it's I think like Redfall had some of that, where it's like the person was like missing like all of their shots and it's like did somebody bring their kid in to like record this demo like because <laughs> he can't hit anything i thought about that like game developers actually are really bad at like i've heard playing that games i've They're heard really that bad at playing games there was a an infamous um i think it was doom eternal it was doom eternal or doom 2016 and uh there was like all it these was doom memes. 2016 it, it was, was all these memes it was like ign uh, IGN reviewers playing Doom, and it would it would showed somebody who was like super bad at the game, like and then they gave it like a horrible, they gave it like a bad review because and it, uh, was, it like... was an IGN, it was, the, but it's true what you're saying. So I don't remember who it was, but there was a reviewer who was very well established within yeah. like the the journalist community, and the way he was playing it was just so damn bad. Didn't understand and he was just, the like, game? Yeah, it was like it was like basically if David Jaff uh, played Doom, basically. It, <laughs> Like he just didn't know how to play the game. He didn't know what he was exactly how the game fluidity was supposed to be like played. How to stuff heal, like how to get new ammo, and all that stuff. Like he, he, like he was doing. He kept falling off. Like at the very beginning of Doom, where you have to kind of platform from location to location to location. Uh, I, I think it's actually Doom Eternal because like there's lava all around and stuff like that. I remember he fell off the map like so many times, and he was just like, "Yeah, he's like the game is too I, punishing because you just keep dying." I have like, a friend. Jump. 
who has been playing games just as long as as I have. And I have always had to do like platforming sections in games for him. And I'm like, dude, like you've been playing these games just as long as I have. And you still have not learned like how to jump from point A to point B. And like everything else, he's like very competent, better than me at some other things, especially like puzzles, way better mm -hmm. than me. And I was like, how this is like the simplest thing. Like you run to the edge and you hit one button and then like you keep going and then you like it's not it's not difficult. <laughs> but like no, he would I... be one of those people. Like I remember too, like uh there was like some section in Metroid Prime that he quit the game because he couldn't he, he couldn't do it. And I'm like, how could you not what? do it? Like what an absolute champion though to like just quit your games because you're bad at them. At jumping. At jumping. I had somebody um, tell me once that they quit a game because they were too good at it. It was hard stuff. They said they got someone, sick of it. Someone, someone really wants some attention. Um, no, but I, damn. Uh, speaking of Doom Eternal, the gameplay itself. Every time I get into an argument about Doom Eternal, it's usually about like people who play on console, and I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I think PC Master Race is the best. But Doom Eternal on a controller is a robbing experience. It sounds insane to me too. And I, and I, like I said, I I had a friend who I gifted Doom Eternal to. And I was super happy that he played it at all because, like, he had never played a Doom game and he did enjoy it. And he told me after he finished it that he played it on controller. And I'm like, dude, you didn't play Doom Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> you played Do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the Ancient Gods Doom. DLC is, like, insanely hard, too. You'll need to play it. Damn. Yeah. It what, was... have you, I've actually seen some very, like, proficient controller players on Doom. I'm sure They're, there like, are. Some walkers. They're out there, but. You know that they're not out there like that, though. They're I know, like majority. Doom Eternal, especially uh, like the Ancient Gods Part One, was full of like encounters that, like, I know that if I missed like a single shot at any point, like I'm not making it out of this like arena. Like, when you get like when the doors like lock off and you have to kill everything, you know, before you can leave, I was like, if I miss like a single shot or like waste a rocket or you know whatever, like I'm not. There's no recovery. You got to yeah. start. Oh man, such a good, such a wonderful, amazing game that was robbed of Game of the Year. For real. I did see that they just revealed a new Warzone 1 map uh, today too, which I I do give them credit for because really? Warzone 1 is going to be potentially, I mean, it, it's not going away. They're going to keep it up. But uh, it's, you know, kind of going to be a dead game in four or five months. Everybody I don't think it's be... going to launch alongside of Modern Warfare 2, though. I think it'll do like what it did last time. Maybe like a month Warfare. later. Yeah, like a month or two later. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll probably see it maybe at Gamescom, because I know Gamescom is in like August, isn't it? When's the beta? Because they've got a beta, too. Um, It seems like August would be a good time frame for the beta, because launch I'm is in Steam October. this time, too. I'm so stoked. For yeah, that. me too. I will actually, I'm actually, I've never been like, wow, I'm going to buy a game because it's on Steam. If I finally will be able to say that out loud. I, I bought Gears 5 on Steam because I didn't want to use the trash uh, <laughs> Windows app. No, it's still trash. Actually, no, the Windows Store app, like the Windows Store app has been revamped completely. It's a, Has it? A whole entire I haven't used like, it lately. Uh, I mean, I just pop up in there because I'm bored. Um, no, it looks really good, actually. and it, it works really well. And the only thing that sucks now is just the Xbox app. Yeah. Uh, how to access the open beta. You have to pre-order, I know. Mm -hmm. I just don't know when the beta is. But it's on PlayStation first for like four or five days. I'm sure that one stings Phil Spencer pretty bad. But he has to honor that still. There's literally no day. Yeah, I, I, October sounds about right to me. I'm pretty sure it'll be like November. So that oh, yeah, comes October. out no, October no, no. 28th. September. Yeah, could be. I have my month mixed up. I think some. I think last time they did two betas too. I think they did like a pre-order only beta and then like an open beta. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, did, was I crazy when I thought I read this right that they're gonna have a multi-platform bundle ex like bundle that they're gonna sell? Uh, I believe that you are correct that if you buy the last gen version, you automatically have to pay for the next gen upgrade. You cannot buy it like a 
Like if you buy the Xbox One version, you cannot like it already comes with because normally they make you pay like an extra like ten dollars or whatever to upgrade to the next gen. Yeah. Uh, you so you you can't buy like just the previous gen. You have to buy. No, no. I thought I read that like if I bought it on PC, I could get like a free version of it on Xbox. Oh, I don't know. Seem right. I don't but know. I was like, that looks kind of cool. I thought I read I, it was an official. I thought I read it on like a like a Twitter canon. I know there's like ten versions of the game, like like different bundles out there. Like yeah, there's a lot of bundles. The cheapest one is seventy bucks. They did away with the sixty dollar version. The vault. Okay, here it is. The vault edition costs thirty dollars more than the cross gen version. It includes. Okay, never mind. That's what I read wrong. You don't you don't actually get an extra copy for free. That would be pretty cool. Maybe that's another call. I'm always like like I always I thought that Back for Blood should have been uh sixty dollars for four copies of the game. So you could have given it to three of your friends. It's a game that's best played with your friends. Yeah, that's true. They got bought out uh Total Rock got bought out by Tencent also, so that's interesting. I think I heard that. Yeah, they got bought out uh I think a month or two ago. Like uh, the Back for Blood game still is like a WB title though. Yeah. Um, all right, so Capcom just had a conference, and it was actually, I, their lineup of games is pretty damn good. They didn't make any, like, groundbreaking announcements, but they, uh, they announced a lot of new content for Resident Evil Village. They're, they're adding third-person third mode. Third-person mode, yeah. Uh, there's, dope. like, two, like, at least two new campaigns, including one where you play as that creepy big lady. <laughs> you play as her, lady, and whatever. Oh, Lady Demistriusu. Yes. Demistriusu, yes. step lit. Foot lady. Foot lady, yeah. Big titty goth girl. Uh, they showed off a little more Resident Evil 4, which is cool. More Monster Hunter content. They basically teased Dragon's Dogma 2. And I think there's an animated series coming for that as well. I think there already is an animated series. They're probably <laughs> continuing it. Is it already out? Okay. I think they have one out. I think they might be making another one. I, don't, I, was, okay. I saw that briefly, so I have to double check the thing. Capcom is actually like randomly Street Fighter Six, Exo yeah. Primal, and then a, like another arcade collection. Like Dude, thirty Capcom something is games. Like just straight crushing it right now. That's what I mean. Like that's a solid lineup. Like that's really good. Like compared to like other people, like Sega, it's just like those <laughs> were the two. Those are like the two competitors I saw. Did you? Other, I'm like, wow, did you see? I got to ask. Uh, you missed last week, so I had to ha- ask. <laughs> Sorry, Maz. I had to ask Maz this. Did you see the new uh the new Sonic gameplay? The new the 3D. What? Looks so bad. What the hell, man? I know. No, nope. this... every time there's a meme going around right now that says when Sega makes a Sonic game and it's like just a meme of just absolute disappointment and it said when fans make a Sonic game and it's just like everybody celebrating. That's always what it is. And I don't know what the hell they keep thinking of when they It do this. literally looks like they took Sonic and dropped them on Zeta Halo and they're like, "Yeah, this is a great idea." <laughs> like like they changed the music. The music is like tranquil like piano music it and like it, it's literally Sonic in a JRPG world. That's yeah, literally what happened. It makes the, And then I saw like the director say today like this is always a bad take, and I get what he's saying. I get what me- some people mean when they say it, but it's always a bad way to say it. He he was like, "Well, the fans just don't understand." And like when you say it like that, like I can see some people like trying to say like, "Well, like we're doing something, and and it'll click when you play it. Like it's 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 a it's a different take, and it'll make more sense when you play it." But when you when you phrase it as when the whole when your whole fan base is mad at you. And you guys are like, well, you just don't understand what we're doing. It makes you sound like you're like, you think you're this like giga brain, you know, like you're just not on my level. Yeah, Pablo Schreier. I'll never yeah. forgive you for literally calling everybody virtually unintelligent in the Halo community. Yeah, it's just a I different side. I can understand if the, if the current fan base can't handle the cognitive dissonance and the differences yeah. that what we're doing with the Halo TV show. What a dick. Uh, you'll you'll never understand all the you know the, the three people that like this pile of trash understand but the 30 million that don't just don't understand but we're so smart there's never a good way to say fans won't understand it though if you really want to say that it's just like we really we, we really want to try something different we're very passionate that's what about i mean this. please like, join us that's y- it yeah that's like, like, like when you when you play it we think that you'll really enjoy what what we're doing uh, this this new take or or whatever Oh, God. Sonic, you're 
Why don't they just make a Sanic game? That's what I want to know. Just Sanic in the wheelchair eating a chili dog. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, dude, Devolver has a serious banger of a lineup too. Like they got so much good stuff coming. Uh, Angerfoot is an amazing game. I don't know if you saw the trailer for that. I've played it. It's so freaking good. It's basically think of playing Hotline Miami in first person. That that's basically what it is. It's it's so good. Uh, Cult of the Lamb is good. I played that. Skate Story. Uh, I don't know what Mick Pixel is, but I know it's got a lot of like cult cult fans. Um, but yeah, Devolver's doing some. Cult of the Lamb looks pretty up my alley. I love myself some two uh, D. Kind of like cute animation. It's almost like it's like almost like a it's like it's got like Zelda like elements. It's got like like base building elements kind of. That's like the c recruiting people to your cult or animals, I guess I should say. Yeah. And then uh, almost like some roguelike elements too. So there's a demo for it on Steam. You know there was oh there is this is free. Yeah. Oh, I should maybe look at it right now. <clears throat> That's actually what our next topic. Uh. Steam Next Fest started today. So there's all these limited time demos for tons of games uh, out right now. And uh, I got a bunch. Uh, what's up, Diz Dizzy? Dizzy Plays. Uh, there's a demo for Rip Out. There's a demo for Metal Hellsinger. I bet you'll like that one. Did Aren't you looking forward to that one? Yeah, looks really good. Yeah, yeah there's Hellsinger a demo out for you, that. Uh, it's like the, yeah, I saw that. I was watching Shr uh, Shroud play for a little bit. That's a little Shroud bit played of Metal like, Hellsinger? Yeah, he was stoked funny. for it. Uh, yeah, the, I, I have one it, problem it with it. I've got one issue with it. It's the only issue. As you, mm -hmm. as you play it, when you get the 16 times multiplier, which is the highest multiplier that you can get, the, the vocals kick in. I hate metal vocals. I, I generally hate metal. Like, I, I really I like, like metal without vocals. And then usually when vocals kick in, I'm like, ah, I don't know. But so like, the, the better you perform, in my personal tastes, like the worse the music gets. So I'm like, ah, I really don't want to be playing that well because then I can hear this person, you know, ruining the music of, that I really am enjoying. I could think of like so many mods that you could do with that. You could literally put like Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush in there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody probably has a, with that demo. Um, there's Angerfoot demo. Highly recommend playing that one. Uh, I, I think it's great that we have these like these like okay i remember anger foot now demo festivals that looks pretty cool it's it's awesome dude um i didn't know this was a blogger game that's awesome it, they just signed it they just announced it during their bizarre e3 conference which who was that um it had suda 51 in their in their conference but he's not he doesn't work for devolver it's so weird i also saw do you know who New Blood are? The publishers of Dusk. Mm -hmm. Uh, they used a cameo from Bam Margera, so they probably paid like twenty bucks for like this like thirty second message bucks. from from yeah. Bam Margera, who's like, "You guys should go play," and he like lists off all the New Blood games. He's just like, and he's like they're totally list. sick, yeah. And he's like, "They're sick games, dude." And then somebody else paid him to say that he was the one who leaked Duke Nukem, the 2001 build of Duke Nukem Forever. And like it became like a serious rumor because uh, it was just a cameo, but like everyone's like, look, it was, you know, Bam says he was the one who leaked it. And it's like so stupid. Uh, man, that's interesting to like throw Bam Arger into it. The entire Jackass crew actually is not in really good terms with, with Bam. Actually. Kicked him out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was over political views too, actually. Well, I mean, he's a mess of a person. He's been yeah, like... Yeah, he 100% he is. Yeah, I, I, I heard it was because they, they said he's like a danger to himself and they didn't want to like... Like, glorify like what... Like, because they're all older now. So they probably have some sense of, you know... Yeah. Decency, I guess, at this no, point I, of their I, life. I, I get what you mean, yeah. I, I don't know the details, but... I don't really care much, to, make, to be honest. I haven't even watched New Jackass. I haven't either. I, I haven't heard anything about it, so I guess it's not that great. That um, or Jackass just isn't funny anymore. Yeah. I, I tweeted this, and I, I don't know if you saw my tweet, but I have to share this. You saw uh, Team Ninja's new game, Wo Long, right? Yes. Okay. So a few months ago, Xbox people like Jez Corden 
for saying that uh, Microsoft had secured an exclusive Wu-Tang game. And I thought it was odd. I was like, why would they pay? Now, with all due respect to Wu-Tang, in 2022, like, why would we be getting like a, a, a platform exclusive Wu-Tang game? And then this, while I was at the gym today, I was like, I bet that like that rumor was actually about this Woe Long game. And like the the rumor got garbled as it passed from like person to person, <laughs> and like so Wo Long turned into Wu Tang, and then some somebody like Jez was like, oh, once it got to him, he heard it was Wu Tang, and then he ended up tweeting it out. Like I bet you it was actually Wo Long, because because it wouldn't make any sense. Like so he tells you like, oh, like the new Wo Long game. Like, oh, you mean Wu Tang? An unapologetically British person <laughs> messes yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Wu Tang. Any other, any other kind of like, uh, uh, cultures language? Yeah, I can, I can imagine it. Uh, that yep. game looked alright. I mean, like, I don't really have much background with that developer or any of the games that they made. So whenever I saw it, I was like, that looks like shit. But I, I was for it. when I saw the Team Ninja logo at first, I was like, oh man, they finally got a new Ninja Gaiden because that was a big OG Xbox exclusive, and that was made by Team Ninja. And I was like, man, they finally did it. Like they because Phil Spencer likes to do that too, like resurrect like old Xbox IP. And I was like, oh man, like they got they oh, got Ninja- Phantom Dust. He he was like crushed when that didn't work out. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, that's if, you, if you really did care, where's our banjo, man? No, no double fine. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. No du- double fine, which again, I they just finished Psychonauts too. Uh, but there was like rumors all over the place that Banjo is getting a revival. It's probably further out if Double Fine's working on it. It's probably still like two, three years away. But supposedly, we're getting a new Banjo. No Banjo, no Conquer. Well, I'm, I'm Microsoft. I still have stuff that I don't like to uh, use. I'm convinced we're never getting a new Conquer, as much as I hate to uh, say it. The biggest left field for me, and this is because it hit close to work, is Naraka Blade Point getting yeah. a console launch. Yeah. And I was just like, what the hell? I was like, I was not expecting this at all. It's like, like next month. Or it's this month. It's, it's like two month. weeks. Yeah. It comes out next week. Yeah. July June 23rd is when it comes out. And I'm just like, I hope I can market this to encourage players I to play can't... in the EU. I don't know why. I'm I'm like a huge Battle Royale guy. Like that was actually my thing when I started streaming, was I was gonna win a game of every single Battle Royale game they ever released. And I got up to like 65 or something like that, like different Battle Royale games that I had played. Like I would play like any rinky dink, like podunk, like anything that was BR. And when Naraka Blade Point came out, like I was just like, this one for some reason doesn't click with me. Like it looks good. It really does. I can't complain. I've heard it plays good. I, have you played it? I, I, it? It's just not my thing. Like I just like, eh. Uh, I mean, like it's a it's an it's a fighting game. That's really what it is. It is a battle royale FGC game. I mean, yeah. I, I've been doing a little bit of community work with uh, with them, and just the community is just like any other run of the mill FGC game, like corner. Mm-hmm. Just very isolated, very niche, um, and full of people who are really good at talking shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which. I played the Rumbleverse network test this past week. And Rumbleverse, if people don't know, you should know, it's made by the people who made the last Killer Instinct game, but it's published by Epic. So uh, it's basically a, think of like a brawler, like Smash, Brawlhalla, something like that, but 40 player battle royale. Like almost all the attacks are like old school, like wrestling moves, like choke slams, suplexes. And you could like choke slam people off of uh, a building, for example, or rip a mailbox off the street and then beat somebody with it. Uh, and it's like it's stylized. It looks a little bit like Fortnite, actually. And it is insanely good. It is the most fun I've had with a new multiplayer game in quite some time. And uh, I, I, just, I got I know like it looks goofy and it is. And it, it just it's one of those like. Really fun games and like. When I was playing it and I was in the final circle, like some of my uh, viewers when I was streaming, it was like that was like really exciting and fun. Like, like I was literally like on the edge of my seat. Like it, it, it was, huh. it's it's really fun. It, it's super easy to pick up, but hard to hard to master in a way. It looks interesting, actually. I don't know this game. When was this announced? 
Mm, maybe, maybe six months ago. Hmm. That's I pretty feel, cool. I didn't know Iron Galaxy was still doing stuff. Yeah. I feel like with Epic Publishing, if they do the right like crossovers and skins and stuff, it really can be huge. Like it, I think it could be big. Oh, agreed. <clears throat> was it like hyper competitive? Um, or do you think you could get there? I, I don't know because it, it is meant to be approachable. Like, uh, look like at it right now. Is that supposed to be very accessible, very approachable? Yeah. For example, like it works kind of like um. I'm trying to think of it. almost like like blood hunt. So like you drop in, you have your basic attacks, but then you have two other attack slots that you find abilities. You find the abilities on the map. So your abilities are different every single game. Or I mean, you could try to get the same attacks every time, but you have to search around for them, almost like finding a gun in a traditional yeah, VR. Um, so mm -hmm. I. I don't know. I, I, you definitely could have tournaments for one hundred percent. I don't know if you could have like pros per se, uh, uh, but there's there's pro okay. Smash players, so I don't know. Pro Smash players, where I thought they all went to jail. Oh, <laughs> maybe they did. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and Nintendo hates that. There's Nintendo hates their own community and frequently tries to shut every single tournament down. Well, I mean. Because all those players keep going to jail, I don't blame them. <laughs> I think Ezra Miller was a big uh, Smash player, wasn't he? Before he was in the, <laughs> yeah. before yeah, he was before in he the Hawaii map. Before he was uh, before he was in acting, I think he was a Smash pro. Yeah, he's smashing all right, smashing yeah. chairs, smashing yeah. people's faces. Well, I was gonna say I can't say it out loud. I I really can't. I was gonna go somewhere really bad. His his latest thing, if you haven't heard. He got caught grooming a 14 year old. Oh, um, God. So and they can't find him. There's a court that's trying to serve him for that. And they can't find him to serve him. The, the he's new hiding. Or he's in a jail cell and nobody even knows where that jail cell is. He's probably in Give me the real Barry Allen. He's probably in Texas. Warner Brothers should just cancel that movie. Nobody even likes the Flash, dude. It's a joke. <clears throat> I think people like the Flash. I just don't think anybody Ooh. likes Snyder. Ooh. Jack Snyder, or Jack Snyder. It's find me a person that likes the Flash. Um, I like yeah. the Flash now. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, that's fair. I don't think anybody does like the Flash, but I heard the the Flash like TV show is actually pretty good. He's a fine supporting character. I I just don't think he's like a you know leading superhero. Well, and like the. Uh... Not Batman versus Superman, but whatever the one like my roommates were watching it. Uh, the whatever the one that's most, that got the Snyder cut, uh, Justice League. Justice I guess. League, yeah. Yeah, like he had a big role in that. Like he for a side character. That's what I mean. Like as a supporting character, he's fine. I, just, you know, Marvel really, when you think about it, has done an incredible job of taking characters from the comics that are really not like prominent and then are popular and then making them prominent and popular and getting them their own movies and getting people to like love them and watch those characters. Like Dr. Strange is not like a popular comic book character. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of them that the MCU has made huge. Yeah. That weren't well, I mean, huge. I don't even think people care about Dr. Strange to be honest. It's more about <laughs> Dr. Strange's stories more than Dr. Strange himself. Well, that's what I mean. They've done an incredible job of making this work. Making you know. them important, yeah, like yeah, really, yeah. like just highlighting it rather right? besides just showing it. Yeah, I get what you mean, though. Uh, I mean, like the Marvel team is actually pretty good at it, despite my my frustrations with them in action. Oh, I've got plenty too. Any changes, yeah, but they are definitely way better than what DC DCEU does. Trash, trash. Because of Jack, Jack Snyder really botched it all. Damn, Jack Snyder. I don't get... They actually officially green-lighted Joker 2, and I'm just like, why? Like, this is such yeah. a bad idea. I mean, well, I mean, it, it made so much sense for the first one, but, I mean, like, it was so commercially successful. It's just oh, the like, first I understand one, why they're doing it. I'm not putting down the first one at all. It, it's just one of those things, like, like The Last of Us, where, like, I, I'm like, this is amazing yep. as a standalone. Like, leave it. Like, don't, yep. don't muddy the waters. Agreed. And I mean, I hope they don't like like with the Joker too. I really hope they don't lean in super hard into the fact that this is an extended universe. A Batman it just thing. Needs, yeah, it just needs to stay Joker. Unless, it's gonna be a like, Joker Bruce Wayne buddy cop movie. 
uh, featuring Jason Jason Statham and uh, The Rock. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of Black the Rock, Adam, the, the fucking Black Adam's trailer, the fucking show. I was like, what did you dude, think about that? What did you think about this Black annoying. Adam? What? I, I don't care. It was annoying. I was like, I, I don't care about this. This is a game. I think. I, I think. So like, in this fairness, is The Rock right here with my energy drink. I, yeah. I, I think. I think The Rock is well cast as Black Adam. Yes. I, 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 I don't think he's a particularly good actor. I really don't. He's got charisma. I'd never take that away from him. He's He's got an insane marketing machine. He brings the hype. I'll, I'll never take that away from him. But I, I hate, I hate how he makes everything about himself. Like, he's already talking about the DC Universe going forward is about is about him. It's about Black Adam. Black Adam is about to, about to upend the DCU, and it's all about, you know, where it goes from here and like i almost like he, he does that with everything though like it's, it's all about him it's all about i'm just like dude if you look at the director of black adam's uh filmography like i guess yeah disrespect i was gonna say no disrespect but like he does not have like a good list of like he's not somebody you'd be like oh this is gonna be a good movie you know it's like i looked at it and i was like ooh, like this really might not be good <laughs> You want to hear something controversial? I really, really liked the Doom movie that The Rock was in, and I liked what or I liked the role <laughs> I, the Rock I watched played it in the so Doom long movie. ago I can't remember. It, I think it's aged pretty well, to be honest. I think I like that. Plus, it's got Homeboy from the uh, the uh, I was about to say the Lost Boys for some reason. Um, from that the Amazon superhero show. What's it called? The Boys. The Boys. The Boys. Oh, it's got yeah, Homelander it's, in it. Uh, the guy with the beard and the black hair. Oh, uh, Billy Butcher, but the actor's name is. God, it's escaping me. I, I know who you're talking about, though. Australian dude. Carl Urban. Yes. Yeah, it's got Carl Urban in it. And How I to think rewatch he did a good it? Job that too. I, I, I didn't know Carl Urban was in it. Yeah, it. I mean, like, it's a bad movie by all means, yeah. but like, it's really fun and it does like a really interesting cinematic that Halo actually probably could have taken a note from. <laughs> um for the halo tv show yeah because they in the in the movie they do like a game sequence of like mm. what it was like playing doom back then mm. and it, i liked it I, that's a it's a fun campy movie something i would just watch like maybe during like, like october for halloween season um and uh yeah speaking of fun and campy when i had when i was sick with COVID a couple weeks ago uh i watched uh for the first time all of ash versus the evil dead while i was sick and it's just like something about it, like it's just mindless, dumb, like fun. Like it was just like it was the perfect series to watch while I was sick because I could just literally just like pretty much veg out and just like watch a guy <laughs> like cut stuff up with a chainsaw and shoot things with a shotgun while like classic rock played. And he and he make like funny one liners and stuff. And it was just it was such an easy watch. It took like no commitment from me as a human being to watch there's like no stress to it like worried that this guy's gonna die or this character you know it it was just like i watched the entire series in like three days it was just yeah okay damn that's a that's some sick literally sick commitment (laughs) i don't think i've like honestly i never heard of evil ash ever until like not even recently but i want to say like maybe a few years ago whenever ash versus evil dead had like a mm-hmm. different game or something like that and i was yeah. like what is ash versus evil dead and i was like what the fuck yeah. i've never heard of this in my life why is it so popular how is it so popular and now i know why it's old as hell yeah um hey, evil dead's been around forever i've been watching some really really awesome gameplay of the quarry that I game it's good it's incredible so far I just watching a streamer. I've been watching Kaide from 100 Th- from 100 Thieves play it and oh my god, the game is wonderful. I want to play this game so I heard badly. it's Supermassive's best game. I don't know their previous games. Uh they're all it's the same genre. They're all similar okay, like games. Narrative games and stuff like that. Yeah. No, this game has been incredible like just from what I I joined in the middle of it all. She was on chapter 5 and I finished a little bit mid chapter 8. Now. But damn, I was like, this game is great. Like, I've heard I, it it's is. a good, it's a good, it's definitely a good couch experience for sure. Like, yeah. I told the girlfriend about it. And I was like, hey, we need to watch this. Like, we need to play this game as soon as we can. It's still, it's still so many bucks though, and that's why I won't buy it. 
definitely either a game pass game or something i'd buy for <laughs> maybe like 30 bucks um, so it, until dawn was their first big hit yes um and then they made the dark pictures anthology which was like two or three similar like shorter though like cinematic experiences i think three <clears throat> four maybe but yeah i heard that what's his name david arquette wants to do a scream game with them like an actual scream game that would be dope actually um but 26 different endings like that's a lot i don't think i'd be able to complete all of them which is probably <laughs> why i don't want to spend 70 bucks on that game yeah but i mean just storytelling wise and it's how do so they play is it almost like a telltale game yeah, it's pretty much like a Telltale game. Yeah. Uh, very, but. very limited, like, actual engaging, like, gameplay. Mm -hmm. It's a two-choice system for the, the pathways that you pick. So okay. it's not it's not like Mass Effect where it's just, like, you pick two or three paths, basically. Mm -hmm. It is you, you pick one, and the next one that you choose will send you over, like, six different pathways. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Um, so it, it was really good. I, I really liked it. And I had, like, a lot... Of, I had a huge oh shit moment. Mm -hmm. Um face got blown off with a shotgun it was like <laughs> good i, I know like, i know a friend a streamer friend of mine was playing it and he said he played it while he was intoxicated and all he said was mistakes were made <laughs> that's like all he would say <laughs> cool. yeah i've heard it's good um what have you been playing lately so it's been really tough for me i've been going through a lot trying to move too uh are you in I your new place yet this Friday, I will be oh, in a new cool. place. So you'll see Jedi in a completely new setting that will be his Again. own home and not a bedroom. <laughs> Again, but the more permanent location. Um, I haven't really had a chance to play a lot. It's been going through a lot lately. And whenever I do have time to play, it's been this little game called The Little Witch in the Woods. Uh, I think I've heard of that. It is. It's in game preview right now. And just imagine the Stardew Valley Animal Crossing is. I don't want to call it too much like Animal Crossing, um, but it's like a little city. It's not a silly builder game, but you follow a character who's a witch and he is just trying to do witch things. And that's literally it. She wants to save a town from. I'm thinking uh, of something else, I think. Uh, it is a role playing game. That's what it says here. Um, but I don't know. I like it. It's, it's just chill. It's been hel helping me pass the time with my days when I'm super tired. But I've also been playing a lot of Phasmophobia. Really? Oh, I love Phasmophobia. VR I'm or level no? 130. I want a VR system so bad I... so I can play that and Among Us VR. <laughs> Among and Us? VR chat, naturally. VR chat, yeah. Um, <clears throat> are you going to be uh, Knuckles if you get VR chat? If you got into Knuckles? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always a Pokemon, but I will probably end up getting like an actual character model because whenever you are like a very short model, you have to keep looking up. <laughs> So I don't think I could pick a short character model anymore. There's a uh, neon white comes out this week, which I think is a weird looking neon Moon? switch exclusive RPG. Uh, a new Ninja Turtles game comes out this week, too, for virtually all platforms. Okay. Fall Guys goes free to play next week. Shadowrun Trilogy comes out next week. Rock of Blade Point Sonic Origins coming soon. Fire Emblem Three Hopes coming soon. Are you a Fire Emblem guy? No. I never was. Yeah, I mean, JRPGs are cool, but I don't fall for all of them. I have, the only one I played was uh, was Game Boy Advance. I don't remember which yeah. one it was, but... Maybe, it was a, maybe that was Advance Wars. I can't remember. Oh, here's what I was thinking of. You, we were talking about Warhammer 40k, and I remember Dark Alliance was a game, and that game was actual garbage. There's a lot of bad Warhammer games for sure. Yeah. This one Warhammer was really Online was supposed to be the World of Warcraft killer. That was they did an MMO and it, it failed so bad. Good. Um, the Vermintide was... games are actually considered very good. I always watch whenever like I'm like on TikTok, people are like just having Vermintide gameplay in the background over like a story that they want to tell or something like that. It's either that or like Grand Theft Auto for me. So yeah. I really like that. Vermintide was really good. Yeah, um, I, I'm excited. I downloaded, about it. I downloaded Fallout Shelter again. I think you had mentioned that like last time I had talked to you. Yeah, I like that game. It's fun. There's a lot. There's so many TV shows out all of a sudden. There's like 
well, Stranger Things. Uh, and part two of that comes out in like three more weeks, I think. There's Obi Wan, which we will not discuss, obviously, for obvious yeah, reasons. For obvious reasons, who's watching it? The Boys, uh, season season three is ongoing. Uh, lots of good animes are coming out too. There's The Devils of Part Timers coming out season two next year or next year next month, and people have been, myself included, have been waiting on that for like almost more than ten years, like almost eight years. I mean, like so they announced the new Trigun so show today. They did, yeah. They're bringing their. Well, I don't think it's announced. I think it was rumored. I don't know if I. I saw I a just, logo. I don't know if the logo leaked or I. I don't know. I don't know. You would know more than uh, me, probably. You're the anime authority, so. I actually don't know. I. I as soon as I got <laughs> off work, I looked at my phone just to check for some notifications. On and it's like Facebook pops up. That's the first thing. Uh, for me, just in case it's like family. And I was like, oh, cool. Somebody posted about Trigon. Trigon's coming out. Something else. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, and then uh, speaking of old animes, um. Another one uh, that the girlfriend really loves, uh, Yurisai Sensei, Yurisai something. It's about like this alien who falls in love with an Earth guy who's an actual oh, bum. Oh god, I'm it's already out. I'm already out. I watched it. She made me watch it with her. It's 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 interesting. It's cute. But Berserk is continuing. I'm sure Berserk you saw is that continuing. news. Continuing. Yeah. I really wish that they would just reboot that anime. And start from the beginning. It and, probably will. And then go, you could will. go for 20 years until you reach the end. I just don't know why we don't have an ongoing Berserk anime. It seems crazy. Maybe because, like, a lot of these studios are just more interested in telling, like, just newer stories that are shorter. Yeah, I mean, Berserk did start in, like, 1990, I think it was. Yeah. So. And it's just, like, redo all those episodes that do technically <clears throat> exist as well. It's just, I'm pretty sure that's just a lot of undertaking right there. Um. But the Castlevania thing was a pretty cool, pretty cool drop. Um, it's going to be taking place over richer Belmont story, which is pretty interesting. The only thing I'm concerned about is that this is not the same studio, not the same director yeah. from the uh, just the Castlevania that we already know of. Right. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But I mean, just based off of like the key art and the animation that we have I seen thought, so far, it's pretty good. I thought seasons three and four of Castlevania were way disappointing i liked one and two a lot like when i watched one and two i was like this is so much better than it has any right to be like this is so good and then seasons three and four are like big steps down for me even the animation quality in three and four went way down ah oh, man not even although the the time differences between three and four they were fast they were closer together than the uh, maybe that's why one and two. so they probably just sped up a little bit more of that but i thought that everything was still up to par i can understand with season three Season three did take a little bit of a back seat, but that's just to prepare itself for season four. Uh, and I love season four. Damn, that was that was so good. I think that the ending was wonderful. Um, and I left enough room for interpretation. Like I yeah. like when, when anything does that. That's why I loved Halo 3's ending so much, because it left things up for interpretation. Then we got Halo 4. And, and now we're here. Uh, I mean <laughs> Started at the yeah. bottom, now we're here. Started at the bottom, now we're here. Stranger Things was great. Also, did you guys watch it? Yes, yeah. yeah. Loved it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I have not stayed up that late for like any reason. Uh but my wife and I stayed up till like two thirty in the morning, like Friday and Saturday when it came out, just just watching Stranger Things. And I, I don't stay up I mean, normally I'm in bed by like eleven o'clock. And we we watched it until like two thirty in the morning. It's just one of those shows. It's like it's like PUBG back in the day. It's like, all right, one more, one more, you know, and then that one um, more goes on for like two three hours and you're barely conscious at this point but absolutely agree man <laughs> like oh my god all of this all of the stranger things season four i can't wait for july 1st like honestly just Is that the I day it was... comes out july 1st yep. yeah two and a half hour finale <laughs> three hour finale oh my god it's in game all over again it's what <laughs> it's, a... it's in game I, all over again. i'm i'm really excited do you got death predictions there's got to be at least one or two prominent deaths i feel I don't think Eleven's gonna die. No, I don't, I don't think, so. think they'll throw her away. But they might throw either Nancy. The powers are too important. Yeah, they might throw away. Uh, which is Mike's Mike's sister's name is Nancy, right? Yes. And then they might. One throw Steve away, and uh, Jonathan both like. Yeah, I think they might kill off Steve. I think. <clears throat> I've heard other people predict that. I would actually like to see Jonathan or Mike die personally. Jonathan's a worthless character at this point. They absolutely did him dirty. Uh, and Mike, I feel like 
his character really hasn't done much since the original season but you like you still have this love for him because like he was originally like basically the main character so i feel like if you killed him like all the other characters would have to deal with that and that would be like very like like 11 Probably would go absolutely absolutely nuts right like 11 would yeah. just be like going full-blown um so i, I think I, i'd like to see jonathan die uh, I think they could kill Nancy because they're setting up this like Nancy Steve thing, like rekindling, and then yeah. it looks like you know he's in trouble. Um, but then I think I mean, she's always like that each season, though. I where think he gets absolutely she, beat the hell out of. Him. I think she might end up sacrificing herself to save him, and yep. that'll be what he has to deal with in the final season. Is that like that? You know, he's kind of always been like the heroic one, and now he's still alive and he lost her and you know no i i absolutely agree uh i think that that's i I would think that's exactly what i would expect to happen um i gotta say though the scene whenever they have uh max running out of the um out of the uh, out of the upside down while they're playing running up that hill i really like that scene that was a very powerful scene of all of all the um kid actors i actually think that she's the strongest uh i think she's really good i think she plays a very realistic role yeah so i, I can agree with you on i, mean, I love to we all love dustin well. we all love dustin yeah. but his character's kind of like it's kind of comical as an as actor it doesn't have a lot of range you know what i mean no 100 like her range in comparison is significantly better and I, I agree with you she's been in a lot more movies too ever yeah. since that happened yeah. Uh, she was in this one, like one movie about like this kid who's like the son of Satan now, and she was in there. I was like, oh, this is she cool. was in. Uh, what here. was that Netflix anthology? Was it called uh, something Street, Fear Street? It, it got pretty popular. It was also an '80s horror thing. Fear Street, I think it was called. There was three Fear of Street. them. They released three movies at the same time, <clears throat> but they were well received too. Yeah, yeah, Fear Street. She was in Fear Street. Yeah, they were well received. She was in part three. Yeah, I think she had a cameo in another one, but it was very small. Oh, no, no, no. She's in like all of them, actually. Yeah, I think there was they're small parts, though. She's the main character in one of them. Uh, Robin's character was was in Fear Street as well for like five minutes. Dude, something about Robin just puts me off with her, like who she was in like the next season. But I get it. It's like a, it's like a couple months later. Their her role is a little bit more established. But like the whole entire quirky, I can't stop talking kind of girl was just like, oh, I'm like, I don't care, I don't care. Yeah. Shut up, Robin. Shut up, Robin. Yeah, she's like an ADHD character, basically. Uh, it's funny to me though because I think the show started absolutely as the kids drive the show, like the kids' kids, and now I feel like it's kind of like kind of the older kids that actually drive the plot like steve and nancy and robin mm-hmm. and uh, not so much jonathan but <laughs> may- maybe argyle he drive he drove the plot oh, yeah. oh yeah he drove the car <laughs> yeah that's true uh, uh i've got to say i really love the way netflix introduces new or not netflix stranger things introduces new yeah. characters they always do an out like an out outlandish wonderful job doing it because yeah. when i really brought in eddie and like his gang of people, yeah. I'm just like, where were these people before? Yeah. Like, why weren't they? Why weren't they here before? And then like the way they introduce him into his cringy. When I heard... I'm the edge lord of the high yeah. school. Yeah. Like when they did that, I was like, God, shut up, Eddie. But I'm like, oh, you end up out, liking he's an absolute it. Absolute yeah. failure, and I love like, him. That's when, why. When you first, when my friend said the same thing to me, like when they first introduced him, I thought he was kind of like, like a bully character. And then after like two episodes, I'm like, I love this guy. Like, yeah. like he's a great like. I agree. Like, there's already so many good characters in this show, and whenever they, I hear they're adding new ones, I'm like, man, can they really fit any more in? You know, like, and, and every single one that they've added, like, it has just been like a home run, basically. Like, it's been, been really good. Season three, when they added uh, <clears throat> Winona Ryder's sidekick, what's his name? Oh, uh, God, I want to say Larry, but it's not Larry. Um, he's wonderful he is yeah, the he's perfect funny. addition though like he's been great in season four he's actually hilarious i love the scene when they're like in russia and he's like well, you give me reward and i'll tell you where to go and he yeah. goes ah yeah let's do that it's, it's like oh can you believe we got a sucker on our hands i'm just like god 
I do. I did not like the scene though. Whenever he ends up like doing karate on the plane, yeah. but uh, at the same time, I'm just like, oh my god, okay, he's he's a value around the side, just being the smart guy in, in yeah. many other ways than one. Speaking of uh, Netflix, this one came literally out of left field for me, and I don't know if it's gonna be Netflix per se, but did you hear that the producers of Cobra Kai are making a, a Duke Nukem movie? Yeah. For real. It's like official. Randy Pitchford came out and said that he's involved in it. And I, I was just like, so like Duke Duke a movie in like, maybe what is this going to be like 2024, 2025? It's just got it's so odd. Who cares about Duke Nukem? That's what I mean. Honestly. It's a dead franchise. So random. What the hell? It's got to be forever was such a flop. Like it's going to be a meme, dude. Uh, who would you want cast as Duke Cam? Or uh, I yeah, don't want Duke anyone Nukem. cast. I don't want anyone cast. Yeah, I got I got Bruce Campbell. <laughs> oh my god, that's so fucking random. Yeah, remember when they made that postal movie? That terrible postal movie? You remember when you was it is it U Bowl? Is that how you say his name? He would make like any video game movie in like six months. You probably haven't heard of him, and that's a good thing for you. Because mm -hmm. like no, this was like before making video game movies was a thing. He would make there's this director named U Bowl would make any video game movie. He would take it. It was like the only work he could get. And they were all abominations. And he swore up and down that they were like, like fine cinema. Like it was the perfect adaption and blah, blah, blah. He made a postal movie. Um, if you search him, I mean, don't, don't do yourself. A favor <laughs> search don't. him, but, but don't. It's, <laughs> it's U W E bowl B O L L. I actually, I got, I got to look it up now. I got to tell you what movies this guy's made. <clears throat> I God only knows what he's doing now. Hopefully nothing. Collecting unemployment or something. Uh, let's see. Filmography. So he started with House of the Dead. And then moved into Alone in the Dark. And then Blood Rain. Uh, and the name of the king, which I'm not sure what that is. Blood Rain 2. Postal. Alone in the Dark 2, Far Cry. Did you, yeah, know, Far Cry did you know a Far Cry? That's what I'm saying, dude. They, it, like, he made, like, it, they were, like, not even B movies. They were. Oh, my God. Uh, Blood Rain 3. I don't know if you even remember Blood Rain. Uh, okay. Rampage, that terrible Rampage movie with, yeah. the, with the Rock. Yeah, remember that one? <clears throat> remember that actually getting, like, some pretty decent marketing around it, too? Uh. Maybe it was pre rock version because there was two of them. Rampage Capital Punishment was the first one. Yeah, this is definitely not the rock version. This is something else. It was a predecessor, but like they're all horrible. This was like the video game movie guy before video game movies were like. Actually of any quality or profitable. What is a good video game movie? I guess Sonic would be the first one. Off the top of my head. I mean, of the Resident Evil movies were super successful, but I would not call them good movies. Resident Evil 1 and 2 were the only two good ones, in my honest opinion. They made Silent Hill movies, which I'm surprised people liked. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't like them. They weren't good. They were not good. Uh, what else? Um, Detective yeah, Pikachu? <laughs> Detective Pikachu was actually pretty good. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. But I, heard I actually it was, liked it. I know it was, it was super good. profitable sucks that they don't want to make another one like nintendo only gave them like one go and they're like all right you're done that's a nintendo thing like oh you 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 made 500 million dollars for us that's great good job now go away i hope the mario movie doesn't suck chris pratt dude chris oh, i hate chris pratt i really really why? do why dude <laughs> jurassic park <laughs> every every scene just put the t-rex in your face put your hand up i, I heard that movie's absolutely atrocious by yeah, the way i heard i heard it was really bad rotten tomatoes is not doing it's not doing really well on rotten tomatoes and normally like when you read reviews like most reviewers like professional reviewers are like they try to keep everything pretty professional you know like and you know but like these reviews were just like lambasting the movie like i really wish i could say something encouraging here but the reality is is this is just like an atrocious film in every sense of the word and you should never see it <laughs> like it's so bad oh my god <clears throat> uh okay we only got two more minutes man holy crap 
I say I feel like we didn't get to talk too much about what happened. I what? think we were I think we were both pretty disappointed with the with this last week, huh? Yeah, well, I I mean there there's a lot to like. Like don't get me wrong, like there's a lot to like, but it, it's like you said like almost all of it is stuff that we already knew about. So there was nothing that like any of us I'd be like, to- like, oh my god, it took my breath away. I never saw this coming. You know, it was almost all games that we knew were coming. And that, that doesn't take away from the games. It just takes away from, like, the discussion of said game. I mean, Redfall, Scorn, Kojima's game, High on Life, um, Overwatch 2, Diablo 4, Callisto Protocol, The Last of Us, Stormgate, Routine, Warhammer 40k, Darktide, uh, Modern Warfare 2, uh exo primal all devolvers games like there's a lot that i'm going to be playing that they showed this week yeah but none of it was like it made me stand up and like get super excited 2023 i have something to look forward to but i just maybe we're just like not intentionally being fed what the future actually holds because we're used to like knowing games maybe sounds like, like a conspiracy out, theory the three years out into the, yeah, yeah i mean honestly tinfoil had it I mean, usually we know like something's on the horizon and mm. I don't think we can confidently say what we know is on the horizon because these games as a service are more interested in telling us like, you know, what you already know and that the well, game is still being supported. It, the game has changed. I mean, they want us playing the same game seven years from now that we're literally playing now. They want us playing Fortnite and Apex Legends and Call of Duty. And I'm not making this sound like a conspiracy theory, like, you know, Big Brother wants you playing this game, but it's it's like the business, you know, like, you know, these are like when you roll out a game, you hope to have the people playing it for like 10 years, you know, like that's that's mm-hmm. the goal. Um, and, you know, people like Blizzard and and Valve were ahead of that game 20 years ago, you know, Counter-Strike and, uh, you know, League of Legends. Half-Life 2, Portal 2, Left 4 Dead 2. Starcraft 2, World of Warcraft. Two, what? Warcraft two. I said Starcraft. Oh, okay. Starcraft two lasted quite a while. I mean, Dota two is still like wild. Dota two, so another one. Popular. Yeah. Every time I go to Steam, like it's always trending, like one of the top ten games. Being I played like, Dota two for like a year, hardcore, and it was the most stressful year of my life. Probably it's such a stressful game. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not a big fan of. Dota 2. I loved it, but it just it it really does consume you. It's so competitive and ugh. Whoop. All right. <clears throat> I guess we're heading out until next week. For sure. Hopefully, uh we get to see some cool stuff that we could talk about next week with Halo. Or I mean hopefully with Halo. Next week uh, we're gonna do a 90 minute show. uh Halo the series post mortem to open the show and then uh, <laughs> There's nothing to say about that. I have now marked. I have now been marked safe from talking about Halo <laughs> for more than ten minutes on an MSS Beyond podcast show. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Just for today. All Just right, everybody. Today. Well, thanks so much. This don't, awesome. don't play the cycle frontier. That's my last advice. Sorry, devs. Last thing I got to say. We should talk about that. But have I'll you played that? Shroud. I'm gonna watch Shroud. That's what I was planning to do. Shroud's <laughs> live, playing it right now. So I was gonna watch it after this. Oh. Veiled Experts, also another game. Don't play. Oh god, dude! I played it for like forty-five minutes. Yes, did you play it? Yeah. Yeah, I played it for like I think I played three matches on stream, and I was actually really excited at first. So like any new shooter, I get excited for. It's just something new, you know. Like oh, I really want to try this. I played it for like three matches, and I'm like, this game's way overly complicated for no reason at all, and it's just the the level design is not good. The map design is not good at all. So yeah, this yeah. ain't going anywhere. The verticality of it, I'm not a big fan of it with the with the map design. And I also like my first death was also <laughs> my very first game, my first round. It was like not my first death was, was that, but my second death was a shotgun. And I was like, well, I'm done with this game. My, I immediately don't want to play what, anymore. What's sad is it, it does have some really good ideas. Like uh, it's got I, some amazing ideas. I really like how in between every round it shows you that little mini map in uh fast forward it shows you where every player moved where every player mm-hmm. died i really liked that a very then, esport ready title yeah and then i like how after certain numbers of rounds like 
the map will change like like an explosion will go off and like a certain building will just like collapse so you can't like take the same spot as you did like the previous rounds because hey mm-hmm. the map just changed like that's cool um it, it's some cool shit it's just but, a shit game yeah it, it's way over complicated and it's you can already tell it's going to be insane pay to win because like you have to use those coins to like upgrade your guns every game and you're going to be able to buy those coins and it's yeah it's a it's a Nexon game, and Nexon generally kills their games very quickly. Unfortunately, that's exactly what my uh, what my coworker said. Cause I was like, "Hey guys, build experts. So it looks pretty interesting on stream." And somebody said, "Nexon game, GG." <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll never forgive Nexon for what they did to Lawbreakers, Cliffy B's uh, studio game. Yeah. There, I'll that never was forgive a... them what they did to Maple Story. <laughs> Maple Story's still going, isn't it? I think it is actually. <laughs> yeah, I think it's got a pretty good community going for it. Let's do a, a Nemesis Maple Story community day. <laughs> You're getting out of your chair on that one. You're like, no, I'm out. No, yeah. I'm out. I'm ready. I need, I need to stretch. It's been a long All day. Right. I've been up since like 8 a.m. All right. I'm going to put up our put up our sponsors then, and then we will uh, see you guys back here next Monday at 6 p.m. Central. Have a good one. Later, y'all.